Welcome to tonight's Salt Lake City uh, Council formal meeting. If you've joined us over the past few weeks, you've seen already that we've been holding our meetings remotely due to declarations of emergency related to the pandemic and the earthquake. We are happy to have you connecting with us online or by phone. Thank you for joining us. To begin, we would like to take a moment of silence as we recite the Pledge of Allegiance. When we're done, we will turn the audio back on. So uh, when you see the image um, of the flag, go ahead and say the Pledge of Allegiance silently to yourself. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> As we begin tonight's meeting, I'd like to take a few moments to comment about the events of the past week. Following the kill, so <clears throat> I want to talk about um, these events as they relate to following the death and the killing of George Floyd. I want to thank all the people who've come out to demonstrate peacefully. I wanna thank you for bringing these issues of systemic injustice back into the light where they belong. We as a council do not support any forms of violence in our city. And we're sad to hear uh, reports of demonstrators and officers who were harmed uh, during these recent events. As your council members, it's our job to enact ordinances that protect residents, businesses, and community groups that call our city home. Black Americans here and across the country are calling on us to do more, and I want you to know Salt Lake City hears you. We stand ready to have the crucial conversations necessary to root out inequality in our laws and in our systems. This issue will take time. It will be uncomfortable. And we know that now, perhaps more than ever in our city's history, the pressure is great. So moving forward, I ask that you remember to please be kind to each other. We are all neighbors. We all deserve safety, respect, and love. So I uh, want to say, or I want to now move on to our items in the agenda okay. uh, by way of an explanation. Um, Council uh, Chair. Yes. May I take a moment of privilege as well? Before yes. We on. Thank yes. you. And yes. I would like to read state. I would like to read some words um, regarding to the same issue that you just mentioned. Thank you. Go ahead, Councilmember Valdez. Thank you. One moment. All right. <clears throat> Yesterday, hundreds of people peacefully demonstrated unitedly against police brutality towards Black Americans. That's also how a demonstration started early Saturday morning. I saw both happen right on the street where I live. The overwhelming majority of participants were peaceful, responsible, and inspiring. They deserve our respect and support, not condemnation. Unfortunately, I also saw on Saturday those that only wanted to harm public and private property in such a violent manner that all it did was create more anger and divided us further instead of uniting us in a just cause. If we want our society to operate on a higher ethical, ethical code, then we have to model that code ourselves. The overwhelming majority of us, including the many good, good police officers of our city, 
are united against police brutality and get against our black neighbors. Thank you to our police department for their effort in keeping people safe these last few days. And especially thank you to those officers that joined the crowd, kneeling or bumping elbows, showing compassion, showing that, showing that they too believe in justice and decry injustice in the hands of some of their colleagues, especially after the tragic death of Mr. George Floyd. As a person of color myself, I wanted to make it clear that I ran for office because I believe we can work on solutions towards justice and equality. I strongly reject attempts to make me choose a side or politicize this issue. Demanding that we pick a side is a big reason why we are in this mess. There are no sides. It's not an either or proposition or proposition, excuse me, or <laughs> proposition. It's not us versus them. It's just us. Not either you're with me or against me. It's just us. I believe in peaceful protests and I also believe in the rule of law to keep our communities safe. I can be an elected official that works closely with our police department, and I can also be a citizen that stands with my neighbors like I did yesterday evening protesting injustices. Only love, listening, and empathy will unite our community. The elected officials who matter most in reforming police departments and the criminal justice systems work at the state and local levels. As the first person of color on our city council, I'm committed to ending those antiquated systems and processes that result in discrimination and racism. It is 2020. We should be so much further along. Systemic racism ends with elected officials. And we do that here on this very council with this administration holding each other accountable, not because we're taking sides, but because it is the right thing to do. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Valdemoros. Um, I will go ahead and move on now to the items on our agenda, uh, unless anybody else wants to make a statement. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Um, so by way of explanation, I wanna give an orientation to the various parts of our agenda. In addition to our business tonight as the city council, we also have business as the local building authority board and the redevelopment agency board. Think of the council as wearing three different hats. We will begin with the business of the local building authority, and then we will change hats and move on to the redevelopment agency business items. And lastly, we will conduct our business as uh, the body of the city council. In addition, I wanna mention a few guidelines for public comment opportunities that we have tonight. Although we are conducting our meetings electronically, more than ever, we want to provide a space for people to feel comfortable and safe to participate. To help facilitate our comment period, please be respectful. Avoid yelling or making racial slurs, obscene or defamatory remarks. We are at item A4, which is approving the local building authority meeting minutes for Tuesday, May 19th, 2020. I'll look for a motion. So moved. Second. I have a motion from Council Member Fowler and a second from Council Member Johnston. Is there any discussion to this motion? Seeing none, then we will go ahead and vote. I uh, do a roll call vote. Council Member Rogers? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Valdemoros? Yes. Uh, Mono? Yes. Dugan? Yes. Fowler? Yes. And I am a yes as well. That passes unanimously. The next item is a continued public hearing um, as the local building authority for item B1. Um, a resolution adopting the final budget for a capital projects fund of the local building authority of Salt Lake City, Utah for fiscal year 2020 to 2021. I'll look for a motion. So moved. I have a motion. motion from council member Fowler. Is there a second? Second. Second. Mr. Chair? Yes. Can we, I just want to double check with staff to see if, if now's the night that we adopt that. 
There's okay. someone that can confirm that for us. I think, I think we no. need to close the public hearing first too, right? There is a motion sheet to close the public hearing. Okay. Adoption is contemplated next Tuesday, along with the annual budget for the city and the RDA. Yeah. So, Mr. Chair, I'd like to uh, substitute motion. Yes, go ahead. I move that we, uh, the board, close the public hearing and refer the item to a future date for action. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have a motion from Councilmember Rogers, a second from Councilmember Mono. Is there any discussion to this? Seeing none, we will roll call it. Councilmember Rogers? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Valdemoros? Yes. Mono? Yes. Uh, Dugan? Yes. Fowler? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. That is unanimous. Uh, that concludes our meeting as the local building authority. I'll ask for a motion to adjourn as the board and reconvene as the redevelopment agency board. Is there a motion? So moved. moved. Second. I have a motion from Councilmember Johnston and a second from Councilmember Valdemoros. Uh, Councilmember Roger, or any discussion to this? Seeing none, Councilmember Rogers. I didn't hear you. Sorry, Mr. Chair. Yes. Johnston? Yes. Valdemoros? Yes. Monta? Yes. Dugan? Yes. Fowler? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Uh, turn the time over to Amy Fowler, Fowler, the RDA board chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, we're here today to do some things as the RDA board, and that would be um, closing the public hearing for our 2020-2021 fiscal year budget. Um, at, we are looking to adopt the budget next week. Madam FYI. Chair? Yes, sir. I have a motion. I move that the board close the public hearing and refer the item to a future date for action. Second. I have a motion by board member Rogers, a second by board member Wharton. Um, any discussion on this? Great, then I will do a roll call. Mr. Rogers. Yes. And board member Wharton. Yes. Board member Dugan. Yes. Board member Mano. Yes. Board member Valdemoros. Yes. Board member Johnston. Yes. And I am a yes, that passes unanimously. Thank you all. And that will conclude our meeting as the RDA board. I will turn it back over to Mr. Chair, Chris Wharton. Uh, actually, we need to uh, vote to adjourn and reconvene. I would look for so, a motion to- Excuse me, Madam Chair. I move to adjourn as the RDA board and to convene as the city council. Second. A motion by board member Wharton, a second by board member Mano. Dugan. Uh, Mr. Wharton. Yes. Johnston. Yes. Dugan. Yes. Valdemoros. Yes. Mano. Yes. Rogers. Yes. And I'm a yes, we're officially adjourned. Great. Thank you. Uh, we're now, we're now wearing our hats as the city council and we are at item F1 for approval of the work session meeting minutes of Tuesday, April 21st, 2020, as well as the formal meeting minutes of April 21st, 2020. I'll look for a motion. Move for approval, Mr. Chair. Second. I have a motion from council member Rogers, a second from council member Johnston. Any discussion to this motion? Seeing none, Councilmember Rogers. Yes. Councilmember Johnston. Yes. Councilmember Va uh, Valdemoros. Yes. Councilmember Mono. Yes. Councilmember Dugan. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Uh, that is. Uh, Hello, Councilmember Fowler. Oh, I'm sorry, Councilmember Fowler. Sorry about that. <laughs> I mean, okay. yes. You, yes. Okay. And I'm a yes as well. That's unanimous. Uh, we'll now move to item F2, a joint ceremonial resolution with Mayor Mendenhall celebrating Pride Month. Uh, before I read the resolution, I want to recognize uh, the Utah Pride Center for their assistance in drafting this motion. 
This is a joint resolution celebrating Pride Month in Salt Lake City. Whereas the month of June is traditionally recognized as Pride Month in commemoration of the Stonewall Riots of 1969, which are widely considered to be the most important events leading to the gay liberation movement and the modern fight for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer plus or LGBTQ rights in the United States. And whereas Salt Lake City has a proud history of leading the state and many other cities across the nation in enacting policies and programs that stand against discrimination and promote equality, opportunity, and prosperity for all members of the LGBTQ community. And whereas Utah's first Pride Parade occurred in Salt Lake City and featured 270 people who marched from the steps of the Utah State Capitol down Main Street, uh, and now the parade has grown to become one of the largest in the state and remains a free and open event to the public. And whereas the Utah Pride Festival began in Salt Lake City with a small informal gathering of Utah's diverse LGBTQ plus community in 1974 and is now an annual cultural event drawing more than 60,000 people. And whereas Pride Month will be an uplifting reminder of how much we have to celebrate and should prompt us to remain diligent and committed in our efforts to ensure full equality, inclusion, and empowerment for every member of our LGBTQ plus community. Now, therefore, be it resolved that, that the Salt Lake City Council and Mayor of Salt Lake City recognize Pride Month in Salt Lake City. Be it further resolved that Salt Lake City encourages and welcomes all residents and visitors to embrace Pride Month's message, message of equality and unity and to enjoy its celebrations this fall in peace, safety, and love. Uh, I will look for a motion. Mr. Chair? Yes. I move that we adopt the joint resolution. Second. Thank you. I have a motion from Council Member Fowler and a second from Council Member Mono. Is there any discussion to this motion? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and roll call vote. And Council Member Rogers. Yes. Councilmember Johnston. Yes. Councilmember Valdemoros. Yes. Councilmember Mono. Yes. Councilmember Dugan. Yes. Councilmember Fowler. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Uh, that is unanimous. And thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. We are now on to item G, which is the public hearings portion of our agenda. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the standard order for our formal meeting agenda has adjusted somewhat to accommodate electronic meetings. Section G for public, uh, for public hearings and H1 of our agenda that include the general comments will be heard as one item. Again, even though we have several hearings, each commenter will be provided two minutes per agenda item that you wish to speak on. If you have more comments on any of the agendas uh, or any of the items on tonight's agenda, please feel free to email the Salt Lake City Council at council.comments at slcgov.com or you can email us uh, via US mail at P.O. Box 145476, Salt Lake City, Utah, 84114 5476, or call us at 801 535 7654. We have received numerous comments via phone and email that pertain to our agenda items today. Please know that council staff has shared with council members all of the comments that have been provided to us up until this point, and we will post all of those comments on the city council website as part of the public record. I'll mention again that although we are conducting meetings electronically, we still do want to provide a space for people to feel comfortable and safe to participate. To help facilitate our comment period, please be respectful. Avoid yelling or making racial slurs, obscene or defamatory remarks. Please know if a caller is not respectful, you will be given one warning. And if the caller continues to not follow the council's rules, we will mute you or disconnect the call. Now, I want to take a minute to explain our electronic process. Our meeting host will identify the callers in the order in which they arrived in WebEx. The host will call two commenters at a time, so the second person can be prepared to start as soon as the first person is finished. If you do not wish to speak when the host states your name and unmutes your line, please state, or excuse me, if, if you do wish to speak, 
um, when the host states your name and unmutes your line, please state which item you are commenting on. Um, and uh, and then we, uh, go ahead and move on with your remarks. If you don't wish to speak, um, you can just say which item you're calling in on, whether you're um, and it state whether you're opposed or supportive, and uh, you will not have to comment. Um, at the two minute mark, or excuse me, uh, when, once you start speaking about your comments, uh, the timer for your two minute remarks will start. At the end of the two minute mark, the host will announce time and your microphone will be muted. If you're speaking on multiple topics, the meeting host will indicate that you may begin your next comment. Now I will take the time to read the first, um, the, excuse me, to first read the public comment hearings for the evening, and then I'll open up the comment period, which includes general comments not related to a specific public hearing. First is item G1 regarding an ordinance. Um, oh, I'm sorry, we previously had um, hosted item G1, which is an ordinance regarding vegetation reduction permits for wildfire mitigation. That has been postponed to a later date. Next, item G2 is an ordinance that would amend the final budget of Salt Lake City, including the employment staffing document for fiscal year 2019 and 2020. Items G3 through G13 are ordinances associated with implementation of the mayor's recommended budget for Salt Lake City, including the library fund for fiscal year 2020 to 2021. G3 is an ordinance appropriating necessary funds to implement the provisions of the Memorandum of Understanding between Salt Lake City Corporation and American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, Local 1004, representing eligible employees. G4 is an ordinance approving a Memorandum of Understanding between Salt Lake City Corporation and the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, Local 1004, representing eligible employees pursuant to the Collective Bargaining and Employee representation, representation Joint Resolution dated March 22, 2011, which shall become effective on proper ratification and signature. Item G5 is an ordinance appropriating the necessary funds to implement the provisions of the Memorandum of Understanding between Salt Lake City Corporation and the International Association of Firefighters, Local 81, representing eligible employees. G6 is an ordinance approving a compensation plan for all non-represented employees of Salt Lake City. G7 is an ordinance appropriating necessary funds to implement the provisions of the Memorandum of Understanding between Salt Lake City Corporation and the Salt Lake Police Association representing eligible employees. G8 is an ordinance approving the Memorandum of Understanding between Salt Lake City and the Salt Lake City Police Association representing eligible employees. G9 is an ordinance adopting the rate of tax levy, including the levy for the library fund, upon all real and personal property within Salt Lake City made taxable by law. G10 is an ordinance adopting the budget for the library fund of Salt Lake City, Utah. G11 is an ordinance amending various fees and fee information set forth in Salt Lake City's consolidated fee schedule. G12 is an ordinance adopting the budget for Salt Lake City, Utah, excluding the budget for the library fund, which is separately adopted, and the employee staffing document of Salt Lake City, Utah. And G13 is an ordinance that would facilitate the uniform regulation of enterprise funds payments in lieu of taxes. Item G14 and G15 are two grant applications regarding a request for $6,500 to provide a daily snack to youth city summer pro program participants at Central City Recreation Center, Fairmont Park, Liberty Park, Ottinger Hall, and the Sorensen Unity Center as part of the Summer Food Program 2020. And the second is a request from the fire department for $45,000 to support Camp Athena and Camp Prometheus for this year. All right, Amanda, if you would please um, go ahead and start with our first public comment here. Thank you, Council Chair. Uh, this is Amanda from the City Council staff. Uh, I will be going through the list of attendees and one by one providing each person the opportunity to speak. Um, if you're not interested in speaking tonight and providing a comment, please let me know if you're just here to listen and I will know to move on to the next person. If you do wish to speak, please share with us your name and the topic of your comment 
And then at that point, I will start the two minute timer. Uh, thank you very much. So first off, we have Colt Robbins followed by Anthony Johnston. Colt, are you there? Oh, your name is on, on Let's see. What, what is the black ski? Where's the black ski? One moment, chair. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Hi, Colt Robbins. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Well, thanks for coming. Um, if you can please state your name and the topic of your comment, and then at that point, I will begin the two-minute timer. Thank you. Um, sorry, just for a quick clarification, is this the time when I can comment about the budget or is that later? Uh, now is the time for you to comment on any um, of the pub, any of the items on our agenda or just general public comment. And if you want to comment on, you can make a two minute comment for each of those things. So if you want to comment on a budget item, you get two minutes. If you want a general comment, you get two minutes, et cetera. Okay, thank you. I would just like to, my name is Colt Robbins and I would like to comment on the, the budget, the proposed budget. Okay. Go ahead, Colt. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so um, I'm a student at the University of Utah as well as a resident in Salt Lake City and I'm very disappointed by the budget this year proposed by the mayor, especially on the funding allocated to the police department, which is about $82 million. And the reason why I'm frustrated by this is because other funds that are much lower deserve much more attention, especially in light of the, the recent protests and also actions that have been taken by the city. Um, every time I get on UTA tracks, I see police officers harassing black and brown people. I also see gentrification throughout the city in older areas and in communities of color. And I also see that very few funds are allocated to housing and to transportation when I feel the city can be doing a lot more for that. And instead it's given to our police officers, which have been wearing full riot gear, tasers and guns in front of peaceful protesters who do not have weapons this week. For that reason, I am demanding that the city council reduce the budget of the police department by $30 million and invest it back into our public defenders and our housing and education funds. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Robbins. Do you want to comment on any other items in the budget or excuse me, on the agenda? No, thank you. That's all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Colt. And next up, we have Anthony Johnston. And then after that? And after Anthony Johnston, we have Emily Allworth. Anthony, can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Hello, Anthony. I'm having some trouble hearing you. Hello, Anthony. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, yes, we can hear you. Hi, Anthony. <laughs> Hi. No, no problem. Would you like to speak tonight? Anthony, I apologize. I think there's some difficulty hearing you. Um, if you could speak up a little bit more. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, my name is Anthony Johnson. I submitted uh, my comments via email, uh, basically the same three minutes. Uh, and I have no. Okay. 
I think I heard um, Mr. Johnson say he already submitted his comments via email and he doesn't have any further comments to give right now. Is that right? Correct. Okay. All okay. right. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you Anthony. Um, next, we have Emily Allworth followed by Samantha Smith. Emily, can you hear me? Hi, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Would you like to speak tonight? Yes, please. Um, my name is Emily Allworth, and I'm a resident of Salt Lake City as well as a, um, a worker here in the city. And I would also like to advocate for potentially um, decreasing the funding towards police in Salt Lake City um, or potentially proposing a more modest budget and instead trying to allocate more funds towards the homeless population, caring for them um, post COVID as well as during the time that we're in and advocating for more social workers and support um, for low income housing so that people are able to stay healthy and off the streets. Um, and I think that a good way of doing that would be to um, decrease the amount of funding currently allocated towards policing or um, just rejecting any increased budgeting for uh, that type of um, uh, budget. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Ms. Allworth. Um, did you want to comment on any other items? Nope, that's it. Thank you for your time. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Samantha Smith has let us know she would not like to speak. Uh, oh. She's here to listen. Um, so following her, we have Devin O'Donnell, followed by Chris Lancaster. Thank you, Devin. Um, let's see. Hear me? Hi, Devin. Hi. Um, so I'm actually Martha. Devin was holding my place while I was on an important call. Um, okay. My name is Martha Castillo, and I am with a Salt Lake City resident, and I would like to um, comment on the police budget and how I do believe that I think, I, I do believe that it should be decreased, um, especially in light of the most recent events regarding police brutality and the way the police conducted themselves um, during the death of a Salt Lake resident, um, uh, Bernardo, excuse me, sorry. I lost my train of thought, uh, Bernardo Palacios uh, Carvajal. So I think that those funds should either be made more modest and reallocated to education of the police and their behavior and to contributing to our homeless population as well as the needs for our students in the Utah educational system to um, you know, receive meals right now or other assistance during the COVID crisis. And that is all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Chris Lancaster, followed by Kayla McKinney. Um, I'd like to talk about the mayor's recommended budget for 2021. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can hear you. Uh, so I live downtown, District 4. Um, I'm here today to again plead for the amendment to the mayor's proposed budget. Currently, there's about $84 million being allocated to the Salt Lake City Police Department. And I think it's absolutely absurd, especially in light of the police brutality that we've seen just in this last week. We must put an end to the militarization of our police force. They are not helping our communities as much as they are oppressing us, especially in Black communities, Indigenous communities, Latino communities, other communities of color, and the LGBTQIA plus communities. And I urge you to implement a hiring freeze on the SLCPD. We do not need more officers. We do not need to increase police funding or increase the police department's budget. Until there is severe police form, we need to end increasing the police budget and funding. If anything, I propose that there should be a 30 million cut from the Salt Lake City Police Department's budget to help the city respond to the effects of COVID-19, specifically the housing crisis and the rise in unemployment. Rather than funneling that money into the police force, that money should be transportation department, which are only receiving about 23 and 4 million respectively. There's a direct link between systematic racism between over policing impoverished communities of color and underfunding affordable housing and public transportation. I take before public transportation. Public 
congestion in areas further away from downtown need fast improvement. More lines that run later. I'm also a drag queen and a prominent member of the LGBTQIA plus community, and I will use my platform to ensure that my community holds you accountable at the polls for the actions that you take regarding this matter. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lancaster. Um, next. Next, we have Kayla McKinney, followed by Michael Kennedy Yoon. There we go. Hello, Kayla. Hi, my name is Kayla McKinney. I'm a Salt Lake City resident. I am echoing the comments that have been made before me and I'm also asking for a massive defunding of the police. I'm asking that the funds that do remain go into mandatory de-escalation training for all police members. And I am asking that the funds that are taken from that budget be allocated to public schools and housing initiatives in the city. Um, I also have a general comment about last night's curfew being untimely and used as a weapon against peaceful protesters. Okay, thank you, Ms. McKinney. And next up, we have Michael Kennedy Yoon, followed by Katie Rocks. Hi there. Uh, my name is Michael Kennedy Yoon, is, and as you may imagine, I am also here to comment on the budget. Uh, big surprise there. Um, I would like to uh, echo the sentiments before me. Uh, I would like to uh, see a decrease in the police allocated budget. Um, and to do so, I'd like to share a story with the council and with the attendees. Um, I was at the protests, um, and uh, at, at one of them, I, there was a I, I saw a 15-year-old girl, who a uh, 15-year-old black girl, who had a, a sign that said "Black Lives Matter," and she was screaming it at a, uh, a police officer. Um, and this police officer was screaming back um, and insulting her. Um, you know, this 15-year-old girl who is looking at the face of somebody who she is worried will kill her, um, and she's asking to not be killed. And this police officer is screaming back words that would get him. Uh, kicked out of a committee meeting. Um, he, I, I found this conduct completely unacceptable for people who are supposed to serve and protect. And that's why I'm asking you to uh, decrease the Salt Lake City Police Department's funding. Um, I, I, I used to believe that police officers were heroes when I was a kid. I, I, you know, I thought that you know you became a hero if you you know if you if you wanted to be a hero, you become a police officer, and that's. I think that that's been demonstrated to me severely in the last week um, that that's not true. If you want to become a hero in Salt Lake City, you become a EMT or you become a firefighter or you become a public school teacher. You do not become a police officer. Um, if you're if you want to be a bully, you become a police officer. And I, I I'm morally opposed to funding bullies. Um, I think that we need to. I think that the police department needs serious reform um, and. I think that uh, they also need a, a strong wake-up call. And I think that defunding them to the tune of $30 million would be that wake-up call. Um, thank you very much. That is uh, the remainder of my comments. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy Yoon. Um, next. Next, we have Katie Rocks, followed by, I have a call-in user number two. Did you say Kennedy Rocks? Oh, um, Katie Rocks. Okay. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. We can hear you. Perfect. All right. So I am here today to discuss the public funding for the future of our beloved Salt Lake City. Taking a look at the projected budget for the fiscal year of 2020 to 2021, I see that the mayor has allocated nearly $85 million from the Salt Lake City Police Department while housing is receiving around 23 million and transit is receiving 4.7 million. I believe this is absolutely unacceptable. Um, I have a few demands here. One is that we implement a hiring freeze on SLCPD instead of hiring 23 new officers as has been proposed. Two is that you all vote no to any increase in police funding or to increase the police department's budget. Three, 
is that you all propose and vote for a $30 million cut from SLCPD's budget as the city responds to projected COVID-19 shortfalls, a housing crisis, and the rise in unemployment. Four, to protect and expand current investments in community-led and health safety strategies instead of investing in police. And five, to do everything in your power to compel SLCPD and all law enforcement agencies to immediately cease enacting violence on community members. Now's the time to invest in a safe, liberated future for our city. We can't afford to keep funding these attacks on our community. There are some proposed alternatives where funding could go. One is to prevent, uh, to provide rent relief and quality housing opportunities for those living at or below the poverty line. Two, to invest in more events, free resources, and skill sharing at city libraries. Three, to provide free public transit and increase the length of bus time schedules and routes. Four, to invest in trained mental health professionals to de-escalate transport and connect those in need with resources. Five, to invest in more outdoor spaces and public parks in lower income neighborhoods. Six, to increase funding for after school programs and providers and for more meals for students in public schooling. Seven, to increase the defending of or the funding of public defenders. Time. Who are, oh, fuck. May I have a general comment as well? Sure. Thank you. Um, there is a direct link of systematic racism between over-policing impoverished communities of color and underfunding affordable housing and public transportation. Without everyday basic necessities, people cannot succeed or live dignified lives. Respectfully, change will only happen if we address these systematic things. Also, I believe that the curfew being issued has effects on both people of color and people in facing impoverishment. So it is rooted in racism and in uh, classism. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Ms. Rocks. Um, next. Next, we have call in user two, followed by Kiani DeJesus. Thank you. Call in user two. Oh, they seem to have left the call. Okay. In that case, we have Kiani DeJesus followed by Leo Kell. Kiani? Hi, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Hi, I'm Kiani DeJesus. I'm a resident of Salt Lake. I believe I'm referring to items G2 and 3, and I also would like to make a general comment in the end. Um, so first, um, I would like to demand and implement that you guys implement a hiring freeze on SLCPD instead of hiring 23 new officers, as has been proposed. I also want you to vote no to any increase in police funding or to increase the police department's budget. Instead, this money could be invested in trained mental health professionals, social workers, and other trained professionals that can de-escalate, de transport, and connect those in need with resources. Um, I also think another way that money could be used is to provide rent relief and quality housing opportunities for those living at or below the poverty line. Um, then my general comment um, was on Aaron Mendenhall's decisions this week. I used to trust you and you have failed me. And most of all, you have failed the black community. The curfew announcement an hour before a peaceful protest was harmful. This was communicated via cell phone and solely in English. This form of communication was not accessible to many people of color. Although protesters were peaceful yesterday, police still shot rubber bullets and arrested black people due to this curfew. Change will only happen if we have leaders who dismantle systematic racism and defund the police. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. DeJesus. Um, next, what do we have next, the next two? Next, we have Leo Kell, followed by Lexi Wilson. And Kiani, I, I apologize for mispronouncing your last name. Leo Kell. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Leo Kell. I am a resident here. And I essentially would like to echo all of the best past comments that have been made. Um, I would like to see less funding go to the police department and more funding going to indispensable services such as welfare programs, community centers, transit, housing, and libraries. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Kell. 
Who's next? Following Mr. Kell, we have Lexi Wilson, followed by Bailey Roberts. It appears Lexi is not on the call anymore. Um, in that case, we have Bailey Roberts, followed by Maggie Bale. Bailey Roberts? Hi. Hello. Hi, uh, my name is Bailey Roberts. I just moved here to Salt Lake a month ago. Um, I'm in District 4. Um, yeah, I was going to say, hey, um, I am here to comment on the budget. Um, looking over the budget that was proposed for 2021, I just wanted to bring attention to the way that we are using the funding our future sales tax. Um, it was uh, separated out into things like housing, transit, streets, public safety. Um, I wanted to bring attention to the housing allocation. Um, it looks like this year's budget adds $1 million um, for things like rent assistance and mortgage assistance. Um, I don't believe that's going to be enough for next year. If we are, as um, pretty much all doctors are saying, going to have a second wave of uh, COVID infections and death, um, $1 million is not going to cover that if we're going to have another surge in fall. I don't believe that will be gone if, if we're anything like it's been in March and April. Um, we'll be back to where we were with even more hurt because people are still not recovered from uh, this first wave. Um, I also uh, am to echo other comments. I don't think that uh, the budget right now for uh, what we're giving the police department is um, right, personally. They had a 12 million, is what I thought when I was looking at it. Ms. Roberts, you for two minutes. I'm sorry, am I at two minutes? Yes, you are. Okay, yeah. and can I have just a general comment? Yes, you may. Um, I just wanted to comment generally on um, Salt Lake's role in these protests and sort of thing, just because I have seen um, in different avenues people saying uh, that Salt Lake doesn't have any business being involved in this. Um, I just want to say I've been a little bit disappointed in um, Salt Lake and the University of Utah Police Department's um, behavior in recent times, including um, the handling and of the death of um, Lauren. And I, just, I think that we have just as much a duty to be involved with what's happening on the world as well as our city. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Roberts. Thank you. Um, next, we have Maggie Bale, followed by Jamie Lowen. Oh, it appears Maggie is no longer on the list. In that case, we have um, Jamie Lowen, followed by Ashley Hamilton. Oh, it also appears Jamie Lowen's not on the list. Okay. Um, apologies. Uh, we have Ashley Hamilton, followed by Leah Munson. Thank you, Ashley. I have uh, two comments one about the budget and one general comment. Um, concerning the budget, it is about transparency. I understand that the average pay of a Salt Lake City police officer is already under the, the national average, but it is comparable to teachers who require four years of training versus 20 to 21 weeks of training. And I think one of the problems we're having in this country right now, everywhere, is lack of training with police officers in psychology in understanding their implicit bias and all of these dynamics. Even for myself, I had to call the police office, like the police office um, to report a sexual assault. And when I got called and patched through to a detective and told him I had been sexually assaulted, he immediately told me to go online and fill out a form 
And when I went to the form, it was about property being damaged instead of like explicitly, if you have been subject to a violent or sexual crime, do not fill this out. So I had a call back. I was then sent to another person on a non-emergent line. And as I'm giving him my story, he comments to me, this most likely will go nowhere. And had I been a different person, most women don't report sexual crime. Um, I probably would have given up, but I didn't. And as a result, they did pick up my case and the guy was convicted, right? But I had to go through two different men telling me, dismissing what I was saying. And that's a reflection of a lack of training. And so if we're gonna give them $84 million, we need to understand how that budget is being spent and what type of ongoing training is happening. And also the consequences for behaviors that don't represent the police force because we have to be better. It's unacceptable and ha we have to be better. Um, and that ends my comment about transparency. And then my general comment is about the current peaceful protests going on and not understanding why city leaders are not demanding from our police officers and from the National Guard that they be allies to the protesters. Why aren't we reframing them, this for them to be protecting us versus ready for us to dismantle things. It's a shift in perspective. And again, that goes back to education and training, but that's something that is attainable. If the police officers are following orders, why isn't that part of the order? And that concludes my comments for the evening. Uh, thank you, Ms. Hamilton. Um, thank you, Ashley. Um, uh, Jamie Lowen is here. Um, and we will take her comment, followed by Leah Munson. Thank you. Um, Jamie? Can you hear me? Yes, Hello? thank you. Okay, hi, my name is actually Danny Knives and I'm a resident of Salt Lake City. I'm here to talk about police budget. I'm also speaking on behalf of my roommates, Jamie Lowen, Carlos Garcia, and Cressa Pratt. I wanna start off by saying that I disagree with the increase of funding to the Salt Lake City Police Department. The projected budget for the fiscal year of 2020 to 2021, allocating nearly $85 million to the Salt Lake City Police Department is completely unacceptable. I do not agree with the 18% increase in funding since 2018. I recommend a $30 million budget cut and higher increase to Salt Lake City PD. Our current climate, we need to turn toward the residents that need our support the most residents of color and residents currently experiencing homelessness. I believe we should reallocate the money to permanent supportive housing and free public transit. For the record, I do not support a budget increase for the Salt Lake City Police Department until they reconstruct their current systems of racism and are able to keep everyone in our community safe, including those with black and brown bodies. I also want to comment about the snacks. I believe the kids should obtain the snacks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, next, we have Leah Munson, followed by Melissa Sakim. Thank you, Leah. Hi, can you guys hear me? Okay, I live and go to school in Salt Lake City, so I'm also here to comment on the Salt Lake City Police Department budget, which I feel is too high. Um, I also want to endorse the call to cut the police department budget by $30 million and to invest those funds into education, affordable housing, and public transport. Trans Thank you. Thank you. Um, Amanda, you want to announce it was Ms. Sopkin? Right. Um, next, we have, um, it was, ooh, I apologize. Um, Excuse me, Chair, I'm having a little bit of technical difficulty. Oh, here we go. Okay. Next, we have um, Melissa Sockham, followed by Madison uh, Sudweeks. Melissa? Hello, Melissa. I 
I'm not hearing from Melissa, so we will try troubleshooting with her on the side, if that's okay, Mr. Chair. Yeah, that's fine. Um, in that case, we will move to Madison Sudweeks, followed by Than Thandui Msuka. I apologize if I mispronounced your name. Uh, Madison, are you there? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Thank you. Hi, my name is Madison Sudweeks. I'm a resident of Salt Lake City District 4. I'm also a social worker. Um, so I just want to start by saying that um, one thing I want to come here today is echo the words of folks who have been passed. I think it's critically important at our time in history right now to put resources away from um, life taking events and put them to more more life sustaining um, things in the budget like like social work like what i'm um i'm called to do in my career and what i do every single day in salt lake city so i would um demand right now that we start with um rejecting the increase in budget i think that's the very first step we can take um i would also like to demand a budget cut and an immediate hiring freeze. I think we have an opportunity to decide which side of history we would like to be on. This is a critical point in our country to show that our um, black, indigenous, and people of color residents of Salt Lake City, that we care for them and support their lives. So I would like to urge you to do all those things that every single person here has suggested and really listen to your constituents at this moment. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sedwicks. Thank you very much. Um, next up, we have Fondui Yusaka, followed by Stephen Yu. Hello, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, hi, can y'all hear me? Uh -huh. Yes, thank you. Awesome, thanks. Um, hi, my name is Tandi Nsiska, uh, and I'm a Black undergraduate student and research assistant at the University of Utah, and I'm also a resident of Salt Lake City. Uh, I'm just going to cut to the chase with y'all. The amount of money allocated to the Salt Lake Police Department in our budget is honestly abhorrent and embarrassing. Uh, minutes ago, y'all were advocating for a Pride Month, and while doing this, you acknowledged that it is a celebration of the riots that occurred in 1969. You advocated for Pride Month because it is a celebration of love and equality, yet by enacting this curfew, militarizing the police, and allocating this incredulous amount of funding to the SLCPD, you're disgracing the Black trans woman who led the riots against brutal police force, forces that created this celebration. You're disgracing your citizens of color and ultimately disgracing your city. The world is watching, literally. Why are there swarms of officers dressed like they're about to go to World War III? And who are they fighting? It is clear that the police officers in downtown Salt Lake are not to, there to protect people, but capital. If the police were there to, if the police were meant to protect folks, they would not have shot Patrick Harmon, Bernardo Palacios, and other victims of their childish abuses of power. Council members, I demand that you ask yourself. Where's the, um, the, you didn't give me the number, bro. Oh, I, your actions reflect the platforms that you have on. Yeah, so the one that's circled. Okay, and after this, I have to find as that as you guys do Okay, there, I. Okay, sorry, I didn't hear about that. Okay, there, I posted it since y'all want to come from my neck. I know how to do live. But it is really, really frustrating to hear some of these um, people who are on the call currently, because you got to listen to the calls even though, like, you're not talking yet. I'm, I'm so and so many of these, I just heard that, like, she... Sorry. Yeah, um, yeah, I um, with my house. Um, she had a person... We've reached two minutes. ...to, like, report her own sexual assault because, like, the Wait, I'm sorry. I sound like there's something. Uh, Council Chair, this is Cindy Lou. I've muted everyone at the moment. If you would like to unmute your microphone, we can work on some adjustments. Okay. Sorry, everybody. It sounded like we had two calls like coming in over the top of each other because I could hear Miss Masaka. Um, or Msaka um, calling, and then it sounded like another call came in over the top of her. So 
If she's still here, I want her to be able to finish her comments. It's Melissa. Melissa? Sorry, go ahead. Just one moment, council chair, sorry. Okay. That caller has left the meeting. Um, Ms. Msaka? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, so following her was Stephen Yu. Okay. Council Chair. Yes. That we miss Miss That we is here. I'll go ahead and unmute her mic. Unmute. Unmute the microphone. Hello. Yes. Are you there? Hi. Yeah. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> You're totally fine. Um, I'm sorry. I don't know what part, uh, how much y'all heard of what I was saying. Uh, but for the sake of time, I'll do my best to just give you a concise summary. Basically, in short, I'm really disappointed that we're advocating for Pride Month, which was based on the efforts of a Black trans woman who was fighting for equality and fighting against extremely brutal police forces. And yet here we are enacting a curfew, uh, which disproportionately affects people of color. We're militarizing our police. Why are they dressed like they're about to go fight World War III? Who are they fighting? I don't understand. It's really disappointing to me that they have such a large amount in our budget. I believe that if they were doing their job properly, they would not have shot folks like Patrick Harmon and Bernardo Palacios. Um, yeah, they are, for these reasons, I am urging y'all to decrease the amount of uh, funding in your budget uh, and rather allocate them to um, funds like housing and public transport. Um, and I am, asking you that you ask yourselves whether your actions are reflecting the platforms that you campaigned on and the values of the people that voted for you and the welfare of your community members because i believe that if you truly care you will further fund efforts that are actually providing our citizens with welfare rather than efforts that are brutalizing them and putting them in jail cells thank you thank you Thank you, Tandi, for your comment. Um, next, we have Stephen Yu, followed by Yehemi Zavala Orozco. Um, Stephen? Hello, Stephen. Your audio is breaking up a little bit. Stephen, we can hear something but we can't hear what it it just is a sound it's really fuzzy and so we can't make out what you're saying um Stephen, we apologize. We're not able to hear your audio. Uh, Mr. Che, would it be okay if we tried to tr troubleshoot? Yes. With him? Okay. Um, thank you very much. Uh, Stephen, we will go back to you. Uh, thank you. Uh, next, we have um, Yehemi Zavala Orozco, followed by Simone Longo. Um, Hello, Yehemi. Hi, can you Hello. hear me? Yes, thank yes. you. Thank you, thank you for the opportunity. Um, I also wanted to echo some of my uh, peers' comments in regards to the police brutality that happened this weekend. Um, and also I want to encourage that if they are going to be funded, it should be an accountability towards them. 
um, they should be having cultural, not, not just culturally competency trainings, but culturally humility trainings, which are in regards to the communities of color and understanding that the problems that we are facing as communities of color, of color me, myself being a person of color and an immigrant, that we fear for them and fear every time that they are there. So that's why I'm recommending the cut in, fund, in funding for police um, department and also to if they get an increase or in get, if they get some budgeting, it should be in, towards their training, the training in cultural competency and cultural humility to make sure that they know how to respond to people of color like me. Also, I wanted to allocate, I, I wanted to request the allocation of funding for public defenders um, since they, since uh, unfortunately communities of color or low income communities do not have the funds to, to, be, to be represented. Um, and also I wanted to comment that it should be an increase in a budget for public transportation on the west side since it's been difficult for communities of color who live in the west side to be able to, to get even to a uh, store. So um, I, I saw that, you know, uh, the Gulf has more money than public defenders. And, and I don't think that it, that should be something that we should be, you know, be very happy about. We should be defending the people that they need, are in need. And also we should be having more public transportation for people who need it. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Yehemi. Um, we will. We are still troubleshooting with Stephen Yu, and in this case, we will move to Simone Longo, followed by Thomas Do Donovan. Okay. Hello, Simone. Hi, uh, is uh, Simone Longo, um, and I'm joined here by Jeremy McDonough, Sarah Roller, and Adam Carl. Um, we have comments on the budget and general comments as well. Can you all hear me? Yes, thank you. Good. Um, so uh, we echo the sentiments expressed on the budget uh, uh, presented by the people before. Um, in addition, we would just also like to, you know, add uh, additional training um, uh, for the police officers as they go in. Um, for the general comments, uh, we call for the firing of Police Chief Mike Brown, um, especially after an interview given uh, with the radio from Hell Show yesterday, uh, where he didn't express um any um any sort of understanding or um that he under, understands the protests at all um and because of this we call we call for his firing um in, in search of someone who can uh actually wants to make um meaningful change to the police department oh and we support the snack program that too <laughs> thank you Thank you very much, Simone. Next, we have Thomas. Oh, uh, he is not here anymore. Um, Thomas Donovan, if you are having any trouble, please reach out to us. Uh, next, we have Stephanie Schubert, followed by Jessica Medina. Stephanie? Hi, can you guys hear me? Yes, thank you. Hi, my name is Stephanie Schubert, and I would like to comment on the budget as well as a general comment. So I'm going to start now. Go ahead. The, um, the mayor has allocated nearly $85 million for the Salt Lake City Police Department, while housing is receiving $23 million in transit and receiving $4.7 million. And transit is receiving $4.7 million, sorry. These numbers represent a 16% increase in police funding since 2018. Most black residents, residents of color and LGBTQ residents have witnessed and are currently experiencing the violence and carelessness of the police here. They are violent in the face of nonviolence and peaceful protesting. I have a few lists of demands. Number one, implement a hiring freeze on the Salt Lake City Police Department instead of hiring 23 new officers. Number two, vote no to increase police funding and cut $30 million from the Salt Lake City Police Department's budget as the city responds to projected COVID shortfalls, a housing crisis, and rise in unemployment. Number three, protect and expand current investment in community-led 
health and safety strategies instead of investing in the police. And number four, do everything in your power to compel SLCPD and all law enforcement agencies to immediately cease enacting violence on community members. And now I'll be moving on to my general comments. Um, I do see that many of you are wearing or displaying the words Black Lives Matter, but I'm wondering what are you actually doing to stand for Black Lives? If that is all you are doing to show solidarity, your words are performative and meaningless. And to Ana Valdemoros, it is extremely disappointing to hear you state that you are neutral and simultaneously declare your support of police and Black Lives. Police officers and the National Guard have been responding violently to peaceful protesters, both in Salt Lake City and across the nation. The city has declared curfews less than two hours before the set curfew and arresting, shooting rubber bullets, and tear gassing people, predominantly black and brown people who are trying to assert their second amendment rights, just like the hundreds of white people who were protesting the coronavirus and posed a greater threat to public safety amidst a global, global pandemic. There was no curfew instilled for their protests, as well as no police and military violence inflicted against them. And lastly, to quote Desmond Tutu, if you are neutral in situations of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. I hope you will listen to the overwhelming majority of demands made by the residents of Salt Lake City and that your activism is not just something you are performing to appease us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. And we have heard back from Stephen Yu, who we will try again to bring us comment. Uh, we will go back to Stephen, followed by Jessica Medina. Um, Stephen. Hi, so I just wanted to echo the ideas of those before me, where I wanna emphasize a defunding of the police department, especially because there was an increase of 7 million the year before. So I don't really understand why we need another 2 million right now. And on top of this, the funding for police is over one fourth of the total general fund. And I believe that we should move this into other areas, such as social spending, especially towards the community and neighborhood development area, which is less than one third of the police departments. And this area is really important considering the budget cuts, cuts in the rest of the area. And if you guys are really concerned about crime with the police department, then social spending has actually been empirically shown to reduce crime anyway. So we're actually doing way more good by moving into these areas. And on top of this, by going into community and neighborhood development, we're also helping out with education through the HAND initiative there. So I believe that we should always look towards our social developments rather than putting more money into the police department. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Yu. Thank you, Stephen. Um, next, we'll hear from Jessica Medina, followed by Nick Halberg. Jessica? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Yeah, okay. Hello, my name is Jessica Medina. I would also like to comment on the police budget that is being recommended. First of all, this money should be used for many other things, but I am just speaking on behalf of one problem. But here I go. We need to defund the money that is going to be invested into the Salt Lake City Police Department and reallocate part of that money into public Utah schools, especially for mental health awareness. We know that Utah has a high rate of teen suicide and depression, along with many other mental illnesses. As a student, I know that many of my peers do not have proper resources or education for mental health. This is especially important for students of color. Counselors often fail to be there and care for their students. This money should be used to hire actual mental health professionals for actual and actual resources that students need. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Medina. Hello. Hello. Hi, this is uh, Nick Halberg. Um, I'm a Salt Lake City resident and I'm here to express my concern over the proposed budget. Um, I am displeased with the amount of money all allotted to the Salt Lake City Police Department. I believe they should receive much less than their proposed 84 million. Specifically, I would like to see the SLCPD's funds and roles associated with social work and homeless outreach transferred to a different department. The police are not the right tool to use when addressing sensitive cases of mental health, addiction, and homelessness. 
Rather, social workers, psychologists, or community advocates should be employed to deal with these cases. For the rent, funds should be set aside to improve opportunities, education jobs, healthcare, housing, and transportation in neighborhoods affected by police brutality and over-incarceration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Um, next, we have Nayeen Christofferson, followed by Megan Young. Hello, Nayeen. Hi, my name is Nayeen Christofferson. Um, first, I want to say thank you to the council and to the mayor. I believe and I'm counting on the fact that you all have really good intentions for a city, and I appreciate all that you do. Um, I'm also here to advocate for a decrease in the proposed funding for the police department, um, at least as much as would correlate to a hiring freeze. I believe whatever money would be spent on hiring 23 new officers should go instead toward programs and resources that could eliminate the need for armed police officers as first responders to emergencies involving substance abuse, homelessness, and mental health. Um, in other words, those funds should go to housing, mental health professionals, and social workers. Um, within the police department, I also believe funding should go to out every sworn officer with body cams. Um, I might be wrong, but the most recent info I could find on this was from 2014, um, at which time um, SLCPD had 20, 250 body cams. And I think it's really important that every single officer has one if they don't already. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, next, we have Megan Young, followed by Megan Birch. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Um, I have two comments, one on the budget and one general comment. Uh, for the budget, I wanted to echo other callers about I agree that a hiring freeze is a good call, and I also think that a decrease of $30 million would be a wise decision. Um, I have to say, I live in the 5th district here in Salt Lake City, and it is one of the more privileged and a big part of how our neighborhoods have so many resources, not access to good education and good community programs. Um, so I would like to see an increase in investment in those. In Um, and then for the general comment, I wanted to express my disappointment and frustration with the sustained curfew. Um, one of the big complaints that I have heard previously from this city council against our previous mayor was uh, the enacting of hasty unilateral decisions without any opportunity for the to weigh in or for the city council to really evaluate those calls and to go ahead and do that same sort of thing. I know that we all want to protect our community. We all want to have a safe and peaceful community, but declaring that anyone who is out in the street in the evening is committing a crime is not the way to do that. That just creates more criminals. So. Um, that concludes my statement. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Yes. May I interrupt real quick? Yes. If I could ask the last caller, she kept, um, or last, I'm sorry, I didn't catch her name. Our last participant kept coming in and out. Could maybe email her comments to us so that we have all of that um, in one place. I could get most of it, but it did kind of come fade in and out a little bit. Yes. Thank you. If she's still on the line. Okay. Yes, Megan, did you hear um, Councilmember Fowler's comment just now? Yes, I did. And I emailed uh, this morning. So, so it's just you. echoing those thoughts. Thanks. Thank you, Megan. Great. Um, Megan Birch is not in the meeting anymore. In that case, we will go along with. Um, Maeve Wall, followed by Madison Porter. Hi, uh, can oh. you hear me okay? 
Yes, yep. thank okay. you. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Maeve Wall. Um, I'm a pretty recent resident of Salt Lake City um, for the past two years, and I am also a doctoral student at the University of Utah studying education, culture, and society. Firstly, I wanted to thank Ashley Hamilton, um, who spoke previously and for sharing such a vulnerable and traumatic story with us, simply to underscore the severity of this issue. I want to echo my fellow citizens in the, the demand to reallocate next year's $84 million budget to emphasize community care and not cops. Any remaining funds should be used for de-escalation, mental health professionals, anti-racist, and cultural competency, competency trainings. The most recent murder at the hands of the Salt Lake City Police of Bernardo Palacios just last week cannot be ignored or set aside. The Salt Lake City Police Department and many of their residents need to look deeply in the mirror of racism and white supremacy. Since I have moved here, I've spoken with many individuals who say that they don't see color and claim to have no harmful intentions when interacting with Salt Lake City residents of color. We need to shift our lens to examine dire impacts of our actions, even those from good cops or not racist citizens. When Salt Lake City residents, public officials, city council members, and policymakers choose to ignore the realities of racism within our city and within ourselves, we do significant and life-taking harm on our residents of color. More broadly, city council must invest in anti-racist efforts, education, and a deep understanding of the legacy of white supremacy in Salt Lake City. In regards to the police budget, I do demand with my fellow citizens that Salt Lake City divest from traditional police and imagine a different future with liberation and justice for all. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I don't see that Madison Porter is still in the meeting. And so I will move on to the next person who is um, Henry Glashin, followed by Edward Hannon. Henry? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Um, I would like to make a comment on the upcoming budget and also a general comment, if that would be all right. Yes, go ahead. Um, I've been a resident of Salt Lake City for 11 years and a resident of the state for 18 years. Um, and in the proposed budget for the fiscal year of uh, 2020 to 2021, the mayor's proposed allocating nearly $85 million to the Salt Lake City Police Department. And I find this completely inappropriate and frankly appalling. $85 million is a 16% increase to 2018's level of police funding. What will this buy us? More military hardware, more less lethal munitions, and more police killings. Meanwhile, our city's housing crisis continues to escalate and our public transit continues to be inadequate to the needs of Salt Lake City's citizens. The mayor's proposed $23 million for housing and a mere $4.7 million for public transportation. To give the police department this money is short-sighted at best and at worst an act of danger to our community. Black residents, residents of color, and LGBTQ residents have witnessed such violence and callousness firsthand. In the past week, we have seen peaceful protests met with, peaceful protests met with tear gas and random acts of cruel violence, including an older gentleman walking with a cane being shoved from behind into the city streets. If you have any sense of decency, you would use the powers we've invested in you as our representatives in the city council to vote against any increases to police funding on the or the police budget. In fact, I propose you vote for a $30 million decrease to the Salt Lake Police Department's the budget and I to implement a hiring freeze instead of hiring 23 new officers. With those funds, we can address COVID-19 shortfalls, Salt Lake City's perpetual housing crisis, and the steady rise of unemployment in our city. I honestly think that there's so many better things we can do with this money and it's inappropriate to spend it on solutions that just aren't working anymore. And as for my general comment, I would like to add that I believe we should add additional screening of police officers to prevent the hiring of white nationalists in our police department and the firing of those currently associated with white nationalism and other hate groups. Thank you very much for listening to my comments. Thank you. Thank you, Henry. Next, we have Edward Hannon, followed by Casey Davis. Edward? Hi, this is Edward. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. 
Okay. Uh, my name is Edward Hannon, and I'm a resident of Salt Lake City, um, Central City. I'm also a homeowner. I live across the street from Liberty Park. And um, I have always had a lot of respect for the Salt Lake City Police Department. I grew up in Los Angeles, California, which was a notoriously racist police department and um, violent police department. But I was very disappointed in the month of January um, when I saw a black man uh, beaten to within an inch of his life by six Salt Lake City police officers in the alley right next to my house. It was on a Sunday. Um, I thought I was a pretty tough guy. I heard the commotion, I went outside. I have never seen such a violent, vicious and abusive uh, assault against a human being in my life. And I was literally shocked from the experience. And I'm ashamed of myself for not having reported it. Um, but anyways, I, I learned that um, racism is a problem in the Salt Lake City Police Department. And I agree with the last caller or commentator, Henry, uh, that we need to root out the white supremacists from the Salt Lake City PD. Um, I think it, it, I still think it's a prof professional police department, but racism is definitely an issue. Also, we need to make the chokehold illegal. Um, there are 28 police departments in the nation where it's illegal. Salt Lake City is not one of them. Um, and then also I wanna echo my disappointment with Mayor Aaron Mendenhall, who purports to be a liberal mayor, uh, but just went from one curfew order, which could be justifiable over, over the weekend, um, given some of the violence and destruction, but then to impose a one week uh, curfew just seems so uh, heavy handed and it, it's such an authoritarian move. Uh, my- uh, Mr. Hannon, we've reached two minutes. Okay, I'd like my commentary period now, please. That was budget. Okay. Thank you. So uh, District 4, uh, Ana Valdemoros is uh, my council member who is um, Argentinian. I voted for her. My late mother was from Colombia. And I know from my experience living in Latin America, um, in Venezuela, Colombia, and Brazil, that democracies there are fragile. When um, a leader with authoritarian tendencies wants to end a democracy and become president for life, the first thing they go after is the free press. And what is their primary tool? Curfews. Anyone who's lived in Latin America knows what curfews are all about and it's very scary. I grew up in the United States. Curfews were not a part of my existence in this country. They are becoming all too common, even from liberal mayors. I am very scared for this country, very scared. I would expect it from Donald Trump, but not from Aaron Mendenhall. I was gonna buy medicine for my dog at the Walmart pharmacy on Monday. I got there at seven o'clock. There were Salt Lake City police in front of the store telling me it was closed at seven o'clock because of the curfew, which wasn't even till eight. I couldn't get my dog's medication. I couldn't get milk for my family. Target was closed. Thank God Smith's Marketplace was open. I do not recognize this city or this country. And I am very concerned. I appreciate your work, council members, and um, don't let the authoritarians in our governor, government run roughshod over you. You might be our last hope. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Edward. Next, we have Casey Davis, followed by Kev Namelka. Casey? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Hi, my name is Casey Davis, and I'm here speaking on behalf of Evan Drage as well. Um, I live in District 4 also, just like the previous speaker. I don't remember his name, sorry. Um, but I want to echo his sentiments about both the curfew and uh, divesting from the police department. Um, as you probably have heard, the police budget is a little bit high this year, so I'd like to recommend that we lower it by $30 million. Um, I'd also like to uh, point to the commenters before me, Ashley Hamilton, Ms. McKinney, and Ms. De Jesus. Um, I thought their points were very nice, and I hope that you listen to all of the comments that have been said here today, and thank you for representing us. Also, one more thing, um, you closed down 6 East for public 
of just pedestrian and bicycle traffic. And that's my street and I love it. So thank you. That was awesome. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Ms. Davis. Thank you, Casey. Uh, next, we have Kev Nemelka, followed by Caitlin McDonough. Kev? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Kev Nemelka. I'm a Salt Lake resident, and I'm also here to add my voice in the people's demand for decreased police budgets. Um, first, I just want to say thank you. And I also hope you can truly hear what all of us are saying, um, regardless of our tone or how articulately we're describing our thoughts. I'd like to highlight that, first of all, it's an unfair double standard to speak so supportively of Pride Month efforts in Salt Lake, efforts of which I'm a major advocate, while neglecting to see how gay rights as we know them today are a direct result of riots. Obviously, Pride is now a major capitalist endeavor, so I guess it's not surprising that people are more supportive of that because we'll be making money off of it as a city. Um, so again, returning to the topic of decreasing police budgets, it's very clear from this past week's demonstrations that the thing we need less than basically anything else is more cops. So I'm adding my voice to call for a hiring freeze within the SLCPD. Whether we hire more social workers or educators or PD or professional development trainers, um, I, I have no preference really. I just, again, literally any other job opportunities that are not related to law enforcement. I'm also calling for no more increases in the SLCPD's already outrageous budget, as well as $30 million decreased from the budget. I'm calling on the council to cease police violence on community members. And this includes, as many commentators have said prior to me, violent language that's been um, elucidated and also violent behaviors that haven't been reported. And lastly, I'd like to comment on the unnecessary city curfew that was imposed, as well as the inappropriate timing of when the alert arrived, because its implication. Mr. Mr. Reached two minutes. Okay, I'd like to add a general comment. Okay, go ahead. Um, so, uh, again, the timing was bad, and it also implied that proceeding and following a peaceful protest, it was clearly being used to hyperbolize and fabricate and amplify white fear in order to further silence the voices of those that were protesting. Um, that's the end of my comments, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Kev. Next, we have Caitlin McDonough, followed by Jacob Lyman. Caitlin? Hi there. Hi. Hi, this is Caitlin Mc. I am a Utah public school teacher, and I would like to comment on the budget, proposed budget. Um, I'd like to echo a lot of sentiments that have been said here tonight. Uh, I absolutely think that we should implement a hiring freeze. I can't see any reason that we need more cops um, to this militarized police force. Um, I also think that we should decrease the budget, $30 million. Um, and I don't really care what you do with it, as long as it's not going to people that pose a threat to our community and are being violent towards our community. Um, I also think that that needs to remain in effect until SLCPD and law enforcement are ceasing all violence on community members. And what I mean by that specifically would be following guidelines from the NAACP um, a ban on knee holds and choke holds in Salt Lake, um, that there should be a use of force continuum for any police department in the country and ensure that there are at least six levels of steps with clear rules on escalation, that each state's open record, our state's open record, should ensure that officer misconduct information and disciplinary histories aren't hidden from the public, um, and that recertification credentials can be denied for police officers if it's determined that their use of deadly force is unwarranted by federal guidelines. I also believe that implementation of a citizens review board in our municipality to hold police departments accountable and build public confidence. 
And until such time, I think that you should continue to hold a hiring freeze and continue to decrease the budget. And that's the end of my comment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Caitlin. Um, next, we have um, Jacob, Jacob Lyman. Jacob, are you there? Yep, I'm here. Thank you. Thank um, you. I want to comment on the 2021 fiscal year budget as well as provide a general comment. Um, I think that so police budget growth is seeing a 20% growth uh, since 2019's fiscal year budget, while Salt Lake City population growth is about 6% around the same time. Um, I think that the, the growth in police com obviously completely outweighs the growth of our population and is unnecessary. And I would like to see uh, budget decreases in a significant way and a hiring freeze uh, for, for the fiscal year. Um, I think that funneling more money into a broken system won't work. Uh, and we, need, we need significant changes in, a, in order to, um, to make the system work better for our communities and especially for communities of color. Um, I think that future funding should come with uh, various stipulations, including bias and de-escalation trainings, um, measures related to police accountability, including charges brought against police who enact violence against their citizens, um, and the demilitarization of our Salt Lake police force, using Montana as an example. Um, I think that funding should be reallocated um, to community programs that actually work to reduce poverty and violence uh, in the community. Um, those include public health programs, housing programs, food and transportation, um, especially as COVID more greatly impacts communities of color. Um, we should be prioritizing those communities. Um, for my general comment, uh, I, I want to, to quote the department mission statement for the Salt Lake City Police Department, which is there to serve as guardians. Um, this is a portion of it. They are to serve as guardians of our community to preserve life and to maintain human rights. Um, I think very clearly police uh, are not doing that and instead are acting as counter protesters. Um, they are protesting against people who are protesting their, uh, their use of violence um, and, and the force that they are using against our community and especially communities of color, especially black communities. Um, police need to enable the protests and to stop enacting violence on those people that are protesting their violence. Um, per Al Jazeera, black Utahns make up just over 1% of our population, but account for 10% of police killings, which must stop. Um, lastly, I, I just wanna, uh, I wanna say thank you to um, the city council for hearing our comments um, and for Air, Air, uh, Mayor Mendenhall for participating. Um, but do you wanna say, uh, Mayor Mendenhall, I, I think you, you took a call during Edward's comments and I feel like that's disrespectful, especially during a point when um, people are feeling uh, frustrated with your administration and frustrated with the work that you're doing currently. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob. Um, next we have. Oh, hello. Excuse me. Um, next, uh, we have Eric Markowitz, uh, who will be followed by Ellie Lavone. Eric, are you there? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Hi, my name is Eric Markowitz, and I'd like to talk related to the budget. Uh, I'd like to ask the council to cut the police budget and slash future and proposed budget increases and to freeze the hiring of new officers. The police have the police have proven that they do not make our community safer and the money could be used for any number of community based alternatives, such as investments in mental health professionals. I want to know why we have the money to outfit the city's police officers in full riot gear, yet as our local schools from personal experience are drastically underfunded and have nearly no resources at their disposal. Additionally, as a general comment, I'm asking for an end to the curfew as it only gives the police more reason to stop, harass, and arrest the most vulnerable people in our community, such as people of color and houseless individuals of Salt Lake. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Um, next, we have Ellie Lavon, followed by Ellen Whaler. Ellie? Good evening. I just want to first say that we are experiencing uh, technical difficulties with our Wi-Fi. If we are cutting out, we apologize and let us know. We can send an email, but we just want to echo everything that everyone else has said. We would love to see those additional $85 million funds allocated to um, parts of our community that could really use um, some support instead of, instead of this. I mean, I think everyone else just said it well. Thank you. 
Thank you, Ms. Levine. Thank you very much, Ellie. Um, next, we have Ellen Whaler, followed by Devin O'Donnell. Oh, it appears Ellen is no longer on our list. Um, in Ellen did actually just text me and said she's. Hello. Sorry. Hello. All right. Uh, I apologize. I don't see Ellen Whaler, but I will, if I hear differently in the chat, we will come back to her. Um, going along, we have uh, Devin O'Donnell followed by Caroline James. Devin? Hi, thank you so much. Um, yeah, my, my roommate did speak earlier, but I would like to add my own words to this. Um, again, City Council and Mayor Mendenhall, I appreciate you being here and listening to this. Um, I know sitting through all of these comments is difficult, but I hope that you will recognize there is a large number of us um, making these requests and demands, and I hope that you will take that in consideration and actually act on them. Um, I do also agree that the budget proposed of um, 80 plus million dollars is excessive when there are so many other um, areas in need in the city. Um, as a resident of the uh, Guadalupe area, walking around the city, um, I can see those our neighbors suffering from homelessness and I'm aware of the lack of funding towards those programs. Um, also growing up in Utah, I'm aware of the way that the education system has been run and is in need of funding for our public school systems. Um, it would also be great to see money headed towards the improved education for our officers, focusing on reduction of force and uh, uh, sensitivity for both racial and other issues. Um, the caller earlier, I, I do not remember her name, but expressing the concern over the way a sexual assault is handled. Um, situations like that just show a lack of uh, education on their part. Um, so yes, just a request to put funding back into those programs, as it's been mentioned, higher social funding, funding for housing, um, transportation, and access to general services has been shown to reduce crime and overall just improve well-being of people. Um, thank you. Um, I do also appreciate the city recognizing this is Pride Month as a drag performer here in the city. Uh, we understand the importance of having that uh, visibility for us, but uh, as descendants of the people who started those original riots, we also recognize it would not exist without Mr. Donald, we the... Please, two minutes. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Devin. Um, next, we have Caroline James, uh, followed by we have a call in user number seven. Caroline, are you there? Um, yes, I am. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. All right, fantastic. Um, good evening, everyone, Council and Aaron Mendenhall. You've heard it all before, so I will make this quick. Um, I would like to talk about the budget. Um, I'm asking that um, the budget for police, which is um, shockingly high and should not be increased, um, decreased by $30 million. I'd like that money to be invested in rent relief and free public tra transportation in communities of color. Uh, I would also like to see a hiring freeze in the police department and a commitment not to increase the budget again um, in the future. So thank you very much. Those are my thoughts. Yeah, that's all. Thank you very much, Caroline. Um, it appears Colin user seven is not here. Um, we will go to Colin user 10, followed by Caitlin Ainsley. Colin user 10, are you there? Hello, Colin user 10, are you there?
Um, it appears we don't have call in user 10. I will keep an eye on the chat if I hear anything otherwise, call in user 10. Uh, moving on, um, we have Caitlin Ainsley followed by Cash Miller. Caitlin? Hi. Hello, Caitlin. Oh, hi. Can you guys hear me? Yes, thank you. Hi, I'm Caitlin Ainsley. Uh, I'm just kind of here to reiterate what everyone has been saying. Um, I think it's important that the cops right now aren't being funded more than they already are. I mean, we're in the middle of a pandemic and our cops are more equipped to handle this at a drop of a hat than we've been prepared for a whole pandemic. So I hope that that is recognized and that the funding is cut at least until they can show that they're not going to harm our citizens and the people that are just trying to make change happen. And that is all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much, Caitlin. Um, next, we have Cash Miller, followed by Ashley Horichi. Cash, are you there? Yeah, this is Cash. Hi, Cash. We can hear you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I am here um, because uh, I'm a Utah resident, and I'd like to reiterate a lot of the comments that have been shared by previous speakers this evening. Um, and I'd also like to thank the city council for taking the time to hear us. Um, a lot of us are first time visitors to um, a function like this, and I think it's really exciting to see the turnout. Uh, it's inspiring to the future. I'd like to also ask how you could allow this budget proposal to get to this point. Um, it's terrifying to imagine that you would justify this amount of finance towards something that we already know is extremely militarized as is. Um, do not give the Salt Lake Police money. The City Council is aware of the terrifying intentions be behind the hoped for funding. I am horrified at the imagery that comes at the realization of the desire to use tear gas, choke holds, and bullets. Imagining I were the target brings tears to my eyes. I ask that you implement a hiring fees, uh, freeze on Salt Lake Police Department instead of hiring 23 new officers. I ask that the City Council vote no to any increase in police funding or to increase the Police Department's budget. I ask that you propose and vote for a $30 million cut from Salt Lake Police Department's budget as the city responds to projected COVID-19 shortfalls, housing crises, and a rise in unemployment. <sighs> I ask that you do everything in your power to compel the Salt Lake Police Department, the mayor, and all law enforcement agencies to immediately cease enacting violence on community members. I also ask that we ban the use of knee holds and choke holds as acceptable practice for police officers. This is barbaric. The use of force continuum for any police department in the country must ensure that there are at least six levels of steps with clear rules on escalation. I ask that each um, of the community members push for each our state's open records act to be available and it must ensure that misconduct- Mr. Miller, we've reached two minutes. Thank you very much for having me. I think that a lot of the comments I'd like to share have already been stated. Thank you, Cash. Um, next, we have Ashley Horici, followed by. <laughs> I can't breathe. Oh, um, one moment. Please. All right, guys. So, can we be done? Um, we did our civil duty. Yes, we're done. Oh, okay. Apologies. Um, next, we have Ashley Horici, followed by Ashlyn Anderson. Ashley? Hi, can you all hear me? Hi. Um, yes, great. Uh, I, my name is Ashley Horiuchi, and I just wanted to start out by thanking you all for your time and for taking the concerns of your constituents seriously. Um, I'm a Salt Lake City resident of District 4, um, and I lived in Salt Lake all my life, but I'm currently a University of Minnesota student. And I've been hearing firsthand accounts from my peers and educators going to the protest of the militarization of the police. Um, and I'm seeing the exact same thing echoed in Salt Lake City. And it's clear to me that in dire situations um, like this, the police have no regard for community safety or for serving the community. So I just like to echo 
what um, my peers have said of div divesting from the police $30 million um, and investing into community programs and investing into developing community based safety models for nonviolent crimes like traffic stops and the such. Um, treating this would treat this treating the symptom of violence by donating to police, um, but not the cause of underfunding social programs in an unjust system is not going to help. Also implementing a hiring freeze is something that I advocate for and transparency of where the budget of the police is specifically going that's easily found by the public, if not publicized. Um, again, thank you for your time. Um, I know it's a lot of the same things, but it's just a testament of how much your consist constituents care. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ashley. Um, next, we have Ashlyn Anderson, followed by Anahi Salcedo. Ashlyn? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, thank you, Ashlyn. Thank you. I am also a Salt Lake City resident of District 4, and I wanted to make a comment about the proposed budget for the Salt Lake City Police Department. I also believe that there should be a hiring freeze and that the council should vote no to any increase in the police department's budget and even cut the budget by at least 30 million and reallocate these funds. I believe that systematic racism intertwines the over-policing of impoverished communities of color while also underfunding affordable housing and public transportation. When people are not having their everyday needs met, they're not going to succeed. Change can only happen if this money is allocated to resources that will help our community, especially our Black community and communities of color. We must fund the things that will help give our citizens the opportunity to grow, thrive, and succeed. This includes funding libraries, housing, transit, education, social welfare programs, and community centers. Police should not have riot gear while teachers are buying supplies for their students with their own money. We need clean air. We need housing for our homeless communities. We need affordable housing. We need better public transportation. And we need more funding in our education system, which I know is facing budget cuts while the police are getting a budget bump. I also have a general comment, if that's OK. Yes, thank you. Yes, please. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Last month, over a thousand people gathered downtown to protest the stay at home order, which was a clear and direct violation of the mayor's order. However, to my knowledge, the police were not blockading the streets in riot gear or holding guns full of rubber bullets, even though some of the protesters were openly carrying lethal weapons. To my knowledge, no arrests were made, and our state never had an official stay at home order that was enforced for a pandemic. But suddenly, we have a week long curfew for peaceful protests about Black Lives Mattering. I think pandemics are deadly, but protests do not have to be. We should let the people gather and be heard. Show us that you truly believe Black Lives Matter by giving Black voices the opportunity to speak in the first place. I also want to add that a city curfew is specifically an act of violence uh, for Salt Lake's Black and Brown working class who are more likely to be working graveyard shifts. When the curfew is being enforced, they're at higher risk of being arrested for breaking curfew. Thank you. Thank you, Ashlyn. Hello, can you all hear me? Yes, we hear. Oh, sorry, I had a sound issue for a second. Thank you, Ashlyn. Um, next, we have Anahi Salcedo, followed by Joseph Moss. Anahi, are you there? Hi, yeah, my name is Anahi Salcedo. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Hi, so I am also a Salt Lake resident and also a student at the University of Utah. And I would just like to echo everything that have, has been said about the budget for the SLC. PD. I do not believe that that budget proposal should be accepted. Um, and also there should be a decrease in the police budget and also a hiring freeze. There's no need for more cops. There is no need for more money there. The money should go elsewhere. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, Anahi. Um, 
And next we have Joseph Moss followed by Jennifer. Oh. Oh, it seems she has logged off. Okay. Um, next we have Joseph Moss followed by Jennifer Nielsen. Joseph. Hello. Um, I would like to just reiterate what most of my colleagues and Salt Lake City um, residents have said. Uh, I believe that there should there should be a cut within the Salt Lake Police Department uh, budget, uh, thirty million at the very least. Uh, where that should be allocated, I would say to not only public transit but also housing. Um, and if you are also going to all wear Black Lives Matter and continue with the curfew and the systemic racism within the police department, then you should actually be about Black Lives Matter instead of just parading it and being performative. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. Um, next, we have Jennifer Nielsen, followed by Jason Ford. Jennifer? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, I sent in a comment earlier today and I wanted to um, follow up on that with the budget and then I wanted to make a general comment. Um, I own a house across from the main public library and the public safety building and I have lived here for eight years and never even now have I seen a reason to turn our downtown into a militarized zone and I don't know if you can hear it but I hope you can. Multiple helicopters flying over our homes for hours every day. My neighborhood is usually quiet. I usually can't even hear, hear traffic from 500 South, but it has not been quiet with this curfew and with enforced enforcement by the Salt Lake City Police Department and the National Guard. The helicopters are as traumatizing as the earthquake. My neighbors and I do not feel safe, and I am ashamed that our mayor has allowed our city to become a militarized zone. We are not terrorists who live here. We are citizens. Their heavily armored presence it hurts our local business, economy, and especially the citizens you represent. The police officers at the protest yesterday said they do not want to harm protesters, so please do not give them funds through the budget for war machines and artillery. Additionally, Salt Lake City does not need to hire more police officers, but train them in mental health and public service. The current police force needs a public citizen oversight board. Salt Lake City Council should not fund $84 million in taxpayer money to the Salt Lake City Police Department. Please reallocate at least $50 million to public services, homeless causes, and especially food and youth programs. Please serve the people. Furthermore, the city needs to reallocate funding to economic development to assist local businesses and citizens that are recovering from the downturn of COVID-19. Two minutes. Thank you. I have a general comment. Mayor Mendenhall, you're awesome. This curfew is not. You can you can recall, you can end the city cur city curfew now. You can reestablish our stalled city economy and de-escalate the war police have brought with their armed forces and armored trucks onto our city streets. <laughs> Thank you all for your time. That is all. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, and next we have Jason Ballard. I apologize, I said your last name wrong earlier. We have Jason Ballard followed by Hillary McDaniel. Jason. Jason Ballard, are you there? Oh, I've been told he is just here to listen. Thank you, Jason. Um, in that case, next we have Hillary McDaniel followed by Julian Percival. Hillary? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Hillary McDaniel. My pronouns are she and her. Um, I'm a Salt Lake resident living in the Marmalade neighborhood and uh, council member Chris Wart Wharton is my representative. I'm white, cisgender, bisexual, and a proud member of the LGBTQ community. 
Uh, my comments today are my own as a private citizen. I do not represent any organization I volunteer or work for. I want to acknowledge my white privilege and my economic privilege. And I also want to acknowledge that this meeting is being held on stolen land that belongs to the Shoshone, Paiute, Goshute, and Butte Indigenous tribes. I want to thank the council for the Pride Month resolution, and I stand in solidarity with the Black University student and many others who spoke earlier. The Stonewall riots were led by transgender women of color, and the parallels between the movement for LGBTQ equality and the movement for Black lives cannot be ignored. Freedom is never voluntarily given, given by the oppressor. It has to be demanded by the oppressed. I'm calling for a freeze on hiring new officers and for Salt Lake City to divest at least $30 million from the Salt Lake City Police Department budget. This divestment and freeze should remain in place until community-led police reform and divestment options are presented to the city. These conversations must be led by people of color who are most impacted in our community. I was part of the peaceful caravan protest on Saturday. My girlfriend and I had a transgender flag on the hood of our car with the words Black Lives Matter written in gaff tape. My good friend rode with us hanging out of our sunroof with a sign that read Black, Brave, Beautiful on one side and Police Reform Now on the other. We taped signs to our windows demanding the release of the body camera footage of 22-year-old Bernardo Palacio Carabal, who was shot 14 times in the back by Salt Lake City Police just last week. Before anyone opened a can of spray paint or started any fires, we chanted in solidarity and I was so proud of my city for coming through. Something happened that morning that will change me forever. A woman came up to our car in tears and said she knew Bernardo. Her son went to school with him and she tearfully asked what happened to him. My friend immediately jumped down from the sunroof and held this woman in tears. I got out of my car and we all cried together. All honking and chanted, chanting faded away. Ms. McDaniel, we have reached two minutes. Yeah, I'd like to make a general comment. Five years ago, in the wake of the killing of Michael Brown and other high profile deaths at the hands of police, six cities took part in a national program designed to help police reform with training on racial bias, how to de-escalate tense situations, new standards for the use of force. One of these cities was Minneapolis where George Floyd was killed by police. There's no evidence that the reforms helped change officer behavior. Police reform advocates all over the country are asking a very important question that I'd like this council to ask themselves. Is the answer not changing how we do policing, but simply doing less policing and moving city funding to different programs, such as alternative community-based safety systems? I realize it's a difficult time to increase funding for these community-based programs. Cities are reeling from COVID-19 pandemic. We have budget shortfalls, but the pandemic pandemics also started to provide some evidence as what of what less police enforcement might look like. We're already in a situation where we're going to have to do a lot of rebuilding from that. Since we already have to do that rebuilding, I want each of you to ask yourselves, what do we want to build? Thank you very much. Thank you, Hillary. Um, next, we have Julian Percival, followed by Hannah May. Julian? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, thank you, Julian. Hi, my name is Julian Percival. Um, I'm a homeowner here in Salt Lake City. I would also like to make comments regarding the proposed budget, uh, echoing many of the constituents that spoke before me that we should not increase the police budget and indeed uh, decrease the budget allocated to police, favoring instead housing programs, transit programs. Um, I want to say also that I'm quite proud of the number of my fellow Salt Lake City residents who have called in tonight to speak their minds. Um, and I think hearing such unanimous comments for the past hour and a half, if not more, uh, should instill the importance of this issue in all of our council members here. And um, I believe that you'd be doing your constituents a great disservice by continuing with the budget increase for the police department. Um, additionally, I see that many of our council members here are displaying Black Lives Matter slogans. I'd like to ask you to deeply consider what that truly means to you as a person and let this be an opportunity for you to literally put your money where your mouth is. Thank you. Thank you, Julian. Um, next, we have Hannah May, followed by Golden Fillmore. Hannah? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, thanks, Hannah. Hello. Um, so, yeah, I think most of what I've said has already been said. Um, I do want to re reiterate uh, justice for Bernardo. Uh, 
his death was tragic and unacceptable and an all too familiar thing. Um, you know, we just saw the cops a couple years ago kill Patrick Harmon. Um, this is a repeated pattern with SLCPD. Um, so yeah, I, I want to reiterate, we need to decrease their funding. Um, I am appalled at the proposed funding. It is way too high um, because they're not serving the people here. Um, we are not being protected or served, especially our residents of color. Um, those, those resources, transportation, housing, education, by far are more deserving of this funding. Um, and I want to reiterate what some of my fellow queer people have said, um, as a queer person, um, you know, I, I appreciate Salt Lake City acknowledging pride, but we cannot pretend that pride did not start with people of color, particularly trans people of color and rioting, um, you know, <laughs> rights are the language of the unheard. Um, but, uh, yeah, most of the points I wanted to make have already been said. I do want to also reiterate, uh, the curfew is unacceptable. Um, I am so deeply disappointed in Mayor Mendenhall for this curfew. Um, it is unacceptable and it is by far impacting um, communities of color, poor folks, people who are working non-standard hours. Um, yeah, I, I'm deeply disappointed. Uh, I, I think all of the points I wanna make have, have been made, but yeah, we need to cut funding drastically, drastically, because pouring more money into the police department is not gonna fix it. We've reached two minutes. Thank you, Hannah. Um, next, we have Golden Fillmore, followed by Ethan Vincent. Golden? Golden Fillmore, can you hear me? I will reach out to Golden via chat if they would like to comment uh, and move on to Ethan Vincent, uh, followed by Ethan Peterson. Ethan? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Hi, I would like to join the voices of um, the other residents of Salt Lake City and say that the police budget is just way too high. We need to cut that by at least 30 million, if not more as well. I believe that we need to stop or we need to put a freeze on the hiring as well. I do believe that this curfew that's been imposed on our city is unlawful and meaningless. Um, Mayor Mendenhall, I believe that you should lift it or at least come out as what Denver, the Denver Police Department has come out and said that the police will not intervene as long as the protests are peaceful. Um, and that's everything that I'd like to say. Thank you. Thank you, Ethan. Uh, I've heard back from Golden. Um, and so I will bring the time back to Golden to say their comment. And then we'll move with Ethan Peterson. Golden? Hello, Golden Fillmore. Golden, if you're speaking, we're not able to hear you. Um, I will go ahead and troubleshoot with you more in the chat. Thank you, Golden. Oh, uh, he says one second. We will go ahead and troubleshoot with Golden in the chat. Thank you. Uh, we'll move ahead then with Ethan Peterson. Ethan? Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, so my name is Ethan. Um, I live downtown. I'm a student at the University of Utah, and I've lived in Utah my whole life. Um, I, I wrote an email to the city council earlier today, but I just want to um, kind of restate what I said there. 
Um, over the past weekend, the past I guess week, I've just I've seen so many instances of, of protests and videos of police abusing their powers and uh, enacting violence, frankly, and oppression of Hong uh, community members. And I just I don't. It's really hard to look at police and see them as people who are actually protecting our community. Um, and so, in light of that, like to me. Uh, the increase in budget for the police department is uh, not okay. And I would like to ask the city council that they uh, defund the police, quite frankly. That's really all I have to say. Thank you, Ethan. Um, next, we have Elmira Azadpour, followed by Charlotte Williams. Um, Elmira, are you there? Yeah. Hi, Elmira, we can hear. Hi, my name is Elmira Azabor, and I like to echo what my community members have said. Um, I recommend that we re reallocate the 30 million of the planned 85 million budget for the police de department funds towards public transportation efforts, such as improving tracks, public health measures, especially in light of COVID-19. Funding for Utah education efforts, especially for low-income students, and for sustainably, sustainability and green energy efforts. This reallocation would enhance our community instead of placing our Black and people of color community at risk even more. With that said, I would also like to recommend a hiring freeze of any additional Salt Lake City police officers. I also ask that we conduct police reform specifically towards the ban of knee holds and choke holds by Salt Lake City police officers as they are entirely unjust. I do have a general comment as well. The short notice of the implemented curfew was unjust and placed many people at risk, especially people of color. Utah citizens simply wanted to protest peacefully, and by placing the curfew, you took the right to assemble away from us. As a person of color, I'm so proud to see my community come together and use our voices. I appreciate the time spent listening and hope that our efforts and words do not go unnoticed. Thank you. Thank you, Elmira. Uh, next, we have Calling user 12, followed by Brighton Sampson. Calling user 12, can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Oh, uh, uh, you can hear me. Uh, yes, thank you. Could you, could you say <laughs> your, name <and> your comment? <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is George Chapman. Um, fasten your seat belts. I've watched and attended or listened to almost all the council meetings over the last 10 years, and I've found that you council members and mayors have always pushed hard to decrease police violence and increase de-escalation. Many of the previous callers don't know you, your backgrounds, and your efforts in the last few years to make our city a respectful, fair, and safe city for everyone everyone. Each of you has done more to reduce police violence, in my opinion, than all the rioters put together. They don't know you, and I, I urge you to tell them who you are, because some of these callers, when they say some, some of these things, they're like clueless. They don't know you. So I urge you to continue to focus a police budget on training, on de-escalation, and other mandatory officer trainings and more specialized body cans and ensuring that all community police interactions are recorded. And for those that are really interested, I urge you to read the May 19th work session packet and watch the council video where you grill the chief of police. I thank the police and the chief for the regular community meetings to hear, accept, and address complaints. You don't need to march in the streets to complain to the police and council and mayor. They regularly ask to meet with anyone who wants to complain. I'm sorry that most of the previous callers have not seen the efforts that you, council members, and the present mayor have committed to over the years to decrease police violence. Thank you. But I need to point out, I and most council members that go to a lot of community council meetings where they are asking Mr. Chapman, for more police. 
and I'm going to do a general comment like everybody else. Uh, but most of the uh, community council meetings, they want more police and more patrols. Uh, so just heads up, there's a big group out there that thinks the other side of the issue is, what the other side is. Council, you were right that a large demographic of our population is intimidated by police in uniform, but it is a sad commentary on our society that the first experience that a kid or citizen has with a cop is during a crime or criminal investigation. I urge you to allow the police to regularly patrol parks in uniform to increase community engagement and understanding. And uh, again, on a general comment, I urge you to reevaluate the ADU ordinance that appears to be increasing housing costs. And you passed over the RDA comments, but I encourage the city attorney to evaluate if the council as RDA board may have inadvertently made an illegal contracted rezone. Thanks for listening. Please tell these listeners who you are I'm finished. <laughs> Thank you, George. Um, we will briefly move back to Golden, and if his audio still does not work, he is okay to email his comment, followed by Alicia Chen. Thank you, Golden. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, thanks, Golden. Excellent, thank you, I'm glad to be here. Um, hi, I just wanted to start by um, saying that I'm grateful to see as many Black Lives Matter um, signs behind y'all as there are and that the opening comments started with an acknowledgement of where we're at but i also want to ground us back into the idea that that is why we're here you have control over these things by way of the budget you have a lot of sway over what the police does and how it especially mayor Mend mendenhall which seems to be the only entity that chief brown and the police department uh <laughs> answered to above them because as of 2019 um the community advisory boards were outlawed by Utah. So there's that. <laughs> so I wanted to ground us back into the fact that we're here because we wanna to talk to you because you do have power here. And so I don't want that to be dismissed. Secondly, um, I want to cite a couple studies that I found, which is that um, between 24 and 40% of police officers are, are reported to be domestic violence um, abusers. And I am, I didn't say this at the beginning, I'm talking about the police budget as with all my peers. Um, and in acknowledging that, according to our current staffage, that means that we have within our staff anywhere from 170 to 284 employees who are potential abusers. Um, those numbers are likely low because we know that those things don't get reported very clearly or easily because of the nature of abuse. Um, so, Looking through your budget as I was yesterday, I noticed that the Rape Recovery Center only has $30,000 allocated to it. I'm also curious what a $3,000 diversity, diversity outreach does. What does that mean? Um, and that hand in hand, I'm curious when you allocate $84 million to the police, um, which is uh, when, you, when you allocate $84 million to the police, which steeply outweighs every other budget item by a large margin. Um, it's really hard to find where the things that support the harm that the police do are also being funded. Like who is, who, where is the funding that is like going toward the harm and violence of the potential of police abusing their, their spouses and or children? Where is that? Mr. Fernandez, we've reached two minutes. Thank you. Ooh. Thank you, Golden. Um, next, we have Alicia Chen, followed by Alana Burma. Berman. Alicia? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Um, so just to address Mr. Chapman's comment from before, regardless of what you all have done in the past, it's obvious that it's not enough and that we need to be doing more. So that's why I think we're all here. Um, nothing I'm going to say is surprising at this point, and I think that said something in and of itself. But I'm going to say it anyway, because I've been waiting <laughs> for about two and a half hours now, um, which I think is great. 
In light of recent events and the mayor's spoken commitment to address racism, I think that before we ratify any city budget, we need a clear plan that shows how this budget will be used to address and not avoid systemic racism in all departments. Most pointedly, the police budget. For example, the $1.5 million in new hires and the half million dollars in raises in the current budget could have been directed towards bias training or de-escalation tactics or cultural immersion in the future. Not only is the funding for the police department in general already excessive, but an increase to this amount is unacceptable considering the behaviors of the officers this past Saturday and yesterday, and especially before we've seen any real positive action come from all of the commitments being made for our black and brown communities. Um, I'd like to move on to general comment. Um, I just learned today that I, it's within my rights as, as a citizen um, that it's part of a police officer's job to enable me to peacefully protest. This includes keeping me safe from violence while I protest and not inciting the violence. A curfew essentially forces a confrontation and the way it has been selectively enforced only proves that the intention is to silence protest specifically black and brown voices that so badly need to be amplified right now. And it's deeply upsetting and troubling to me that this is happening. Thank you. Thank you, Alicia. Um, next, we have Alana Berman followed by Ann Charles. Alana. Hi. Um, so my name is Alana Berman and I'm a resident of Salt Lake City from District 3. Uh, first of all, I want to commend the eloquent and passionate speakers who came before me who have made many exceptional recommendations for how to reframe the values and vision of our city. Like many others, I'm here to comment regarding the proposed police budget, which is excessive, especially when compared to the allocation for housing. The two are intimately related and the proposed budget prioritizes punishment and regulation rather than community support for accessible housing, which has been a rising issue over the last few years and is sure to become even more necessary as COVID-19 ravages the country and unemployment continues to rise. The abstract for the increased allocation to the budget department, or I'm sorry, to the police department in the budget indicates that it's framed in the context of the police providing, quote, professional public safety and response to the community following the unprecedented and uncertain times resulting from the March 2020 earthquake and the COVID-19 pandemic, end quote. We need to extract the two from one another and allocate community support funds to departments that are service oriented rather than regulation oriented to individuals that do not show up with guns and an expectation of compliance. I'd like to register my comment focused on the police budget, reducing the budget, implementing a hiring freeze, and also allocating a larger proportion of the remaining budget toward a more robust program for integrated community training, de-escalation and bias training, and establishing a licensing program. Lawyers need seven years of university to know and practice the law. Police officers spend a few months at an academy and are given a gun to enforce the law. Policing in Salt Lake City needs to be a licensed and regulated profession. Um, moving on to like a quick general comment, I am also pro snacks for kids and want to register my support for the pedestrian streets uh, that have been implemented to respond to the need for increased outdoor access. I think they should become a regular feature of summer policy in the city. Um, and I think that they should be considered in line with the inhumane curfew rules that have been implemented lately. They were put in place so that people had healthy access to the outdoors in the summer. Uh, and we are regularly limiting that now with this unfair and unnecessary curfew. Uh, thank you very much for listening. It's been a long go and I appreciate your time. That concludes my comments for this evening. Thank you, Alana. Um, next, we have Anne Charles followed by Adam Hickey. Anne? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, thanks, Anne. Hi, my name is Anne Charles and I'd like to comment on the budget. Um, I'm a resident of Salt Lake City and I've been here for over three years now. I'm a therapist at a substance abuse treatment center and I wanted to reiterate what a lot of other people have said tonight. I looked at the budget for the coming year and was really disappointed to see such a large amount given to the police, especially uh, with recent events. Um, so over $83 million was proposed, which a lot of people have kind of hashed out all that 
but I was really disappointed to see the lack of funding to housing, transportation, homeless services, treatment centers, and mental health services. As someone who's currently working in a residential treatment center, um, we've been having a lot of issues with COVID specifically, and a lot of the services that have been provided for our clients, I've been very disappointed by. Um, my supervisor was telling me that a lot of the clients we've had with COVID were sent just to gymnasiums where they were being kept with people who were also actively using and putting them in a really hard position of being with people who are actively using when they're trying to be in recovery. So I think we need to fund a lot more of these COVID treatment services for people in residential treatment centers specifically. Um, and I just wanted a general comment about the accessibility of this platform and just kind of, it was hard for me to access, I know, so I'm sure it was really hard for others to access. So if you guys could find a better way to make this easier to navigate or easier to, to participate in, I think that'd be really good. I understand it's hard given, I don't know, things to just kind of being thrown on you, but as much as you can make this accessible, it was hard for me to figure out how to get on it. And I know it was for others I've spoken to as well. So thank you. Thank you, Anne. Um, next, we have Adam Hickey, followed by Keon Avalon. At, let's see, Adam? Hi, can you all hear me? Yes, thanks, Adam. All right, great. Uh, my name is Adam Hickey. Uh, thank you all to, to um, uh, the time you have spent listening and also um, ensuring that city council meetings are still uh, accessible during the pandemic. Uh, I'd like to talk about the budget. Uh, I agree with almost everyone who's called in that uh, the, the budget for the police department uh, should be reduced. Uh, as I think was mentioned before, I'd like to emphasize that if the mayor's uh, uh, recommended a budget for the fiscal year 2021 is approved, it will be a approximately $13.5 million dollar uh, increase from the fiscal year 2019 adopted budget, um, which represents more than 50% of the increases uh, in funding that have been made since the uh, fiscal year uh, 2019 adopted budget. I'd like to emphasize that um, regardless of, of, of what has been done before to address um, police brutality uh, and other issues with the, our policing and judicial systems, uh, police brutality is, is not only something that affects the country as a whole, but also something that affects Salt Lake City specifically. Uh, in November 2019, uh, the city government closed a, uh, a, a shelter for people experiencing homelessness um, and replaced it with shelters which did not offer as much accommodation and were in uh, less opportune places. Uh, in response, a number of residents of Salt Lake City created a, a peaceful camping occupation of Washington Square Park um, to try to provide uh, some of the services and resources which the city was not providing. And in response, the police in riot gear uh, showed up in January, uh, disrupted the effort and dispersed those present and arrested some of those present uh, on traffic violation charges because uh, they knew that they uh, could not uh, uh, feasibly charge any of those present with any other charges actually related to what was happening. So instead arrested them on traffic charges. Um, and quite frankly, I think the city needs to stop uh, rewarding the police department's behavior um, with tens of millions of dollars. Mr. Hickey, we've reached two minutes. Uh, then I, I'd like to I'd like to make a general comment. Um, just to yeah, just to finish what I was saying. Uh, and I think that the city council needs to um, add to what they have already done uh, to to try to prevent police brutality uh, and reduce the police department's budget to show that um, continued misbehavior on their part will not be tolerated. I'd also like to add that um, if the city would like to see uh, protests and riots stop on this issue, uh, at the very best, uh, uh, curfews and attempting to to contain and disrupt those protests, at the very best, are just going to, to, to kick the can down the road. Um, if uh, the city wants protests to stop, then these issues uh, need to be adequately addressed. Uh, and I believe that reducing the police department's budget is one way in which uh, uh, the city can address that issue. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Um, next, we have Kian Avlon followed by Kaya Lund. Kian? Hey, this is Kiana. Can you hear me okay? Yes, thank you. Thank you all for staying on a very long call um, online. I know it can be harder to pay attention in a virtual format. 
Um, I'm located in South Salt Lake. Um, I'm calling in regards to FY 2021 in which the mayor has allocated nearly $85 million to the SLC PD. I'd like to see a hiring increase to the Salt Lake Police Department and propose at least a $50 million cut to the police department. We must put our financial resources towards dealing with COVID-19, our unhoused neighbors, and the rise in unemployment. Police have shown time and time again that they can't keep our community safe, and in fact, they're doing the opposite as they continue to murder Black people across the country and continually escalate violence. So I urge you to start investing in community-led health and safety strategies. Minneapolis has participated in de-escalation training, and it's quite obvious that reform hasn't been working. Salt Lake City has the opportunity to be a leader in major changes by showing with our money that we can create a safer community by investing in the community, not in police. And I'd also like to end with a general comment. Um, I'm a current graduate student and I work at Westminster College um, in Sugar House, and it's a really awful feeling to read emails coming from our administration, having to acknowledge how much danger our Black undergraduate students are living in the city. Um, these are students who may be away from home for the first time in their lives, and in addition to dealing with a pandemic, they have to worry about their physical safety leaving the house because of police. It was really embarrassing seeing the National Guard, SWAT teams, and police take over downtown the last few days. And if you're uncomfortable with the current unrest of the protesters, please take a hard look at the police department's track record of violence. It's really not my idea of fun, wondering if an officer will tear gas me and my loved ones for standing up against racist, state-sanctioned violence. Lastly, Mayor Mendenhall, I'd urge you to consider the criminalizing of protests through curfews, um, that this isn't an effective strategy. As we're taking to the streets because we've been left with no other option, the Salt Lake Police Department's patterns of brutality continue. These protests are a logical outcome to centuries of systemic racism, and they're not going to stop until the government stops arming police to attack its own residents. We would not need to be congregating in the streets in the first place if politicians in positions of power helped us stop police brutality and address systemic racism as a community. Thank you so much for all your time. Thank you, Kian. Uh, next, we have Kaya Lund, followed by Christiana Seeger. Kaya? Hi, yeah, my name is Kaya Lund and I'm a Salt Lake City resident in District 6. And I would just like to really quickly uh, echo the previous statements demanding a decrease in funding to the Salt Lake Police Department. And that is it, thank you. Thank you, Kaya. Next. Excuse me, Amanda. Yes, Chris. Um, just sure. checking in, <laughs> just checking in, how many um, commenters do we have remaining? I, um, I see on the queue, we have gone through 80 and there's still um, 207. Okay, I, uh, I just want to say one thing. I don't want to discourage anybody um, from saying whatever message that they want us as a council to hear. Um, I, I will say that since a lot of information that we've heard sounds um, extraordinarily similar. I just want to give a little bit of information um, that might help um, people going forward. Um, the Salt Lake City Police Department already pro prohibits choke holds, knee holds, and other similar tactics. There is already a hiring freeze in place for the department. There is no proposal to fund 23 new officers in this budget. The only increases, um, if, you, if you tuned into our previous uh, work session discussion, the only increases to the um, police budget um, have been um, for, that, that I've heard, have been for a victim advocate, for additional de-escalation and implicit bias training in addition to what already is required, and that there are some salary increases that we are obligated to fulfill by previous contracts that are already, that were already negotiated and are already in place. So um, again, don't wanna dissuade anybody from sharing your comments, but I thought that some of this information might be valuable to people um, that are waiting in line to make their comments. Thank you. Thank you, Council Chair. Are we okay to continue? Yes, go ahead. Okay, awesome. Um, next, we have uh, Christiana Seer, followed by Margarita Satini. Christiana? Hi, can you hear me? 
Yes, thanks, Christiana. Hi, um, I just want to echo everybody else's sentiment. Um, I believe that it is the city council's moral obligation to consider reallocating a portion of that proposed $85 million going to the police department. These funds could and should be used for the betterment of our community instead of being distributed to the police department that inflicts intimidation and violence on the population that it's meant to protect. Funding could be allocated to social workers who are actually educated on how to de-escalate situations in a nonviolent manner. Funds could also be used to bolster essential community programs, including housing stability, public transportation, food and nutrition assistance, homelessness services, health care and mental health care services, parks, arts, etc. These programs will enrich the lives of our constituents, create a more united community, and will decrease the need for a violent police force. I do not support the Salt Lake Police Department, and I do not approve of my tax money supporting them. Thank you. Thanks, Christiana. Um, next, we have Margarita Satini, followed by Matthew Wood. Margarita? Hi, yes, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Awesome. Hi, everyone. My name is Margarita Satini. Now, I live in Midville but I work in Salt Lake City and I'm a community activist advocate for the Pacific Islander community. I am a woman, a uh, person of color. Um, and I just wanted to call because I wanted to talk about, of course, lift everyone's comments prior to me about uh, the police department, but not only is implicit bias and de-escalation training important, I really think that the, the focus needs to be on your hiring practices because um, if we don't catch people who um, have issues with people from other races, then once they get into the police department, it's higher. It's probably difficult, difficult to fire them. Um, uh, also, I would implore you, Mayor Mendenhall and members of the city council, uh, a very a thriving community is one that's fully funded or that one that's adequately funded and also is stacked with access to uh, resources. Um, definitely during the COVID, uh, COVID issue that we're going through right now, this pandemic, uh, 84104 and 84116 are the two hottest COVID spots in Salt Lake County. And they have, we have the highest uh, Pacific Islander, um, in, we have the highest infection rate, the highest hospitalization rate. And right now, if more than anything, we definitely need funding to help those that have been impacted by COVID financially. We need rent relief. Uh, we need, you know, utility relief. Uh, we definitely need a lot of help in in those communities during this time. Um, but I would just really ask that, um, you know, if you would just really focus on the hiring practices of the police department. Thirty million dollars is a lot of money, and that's. I mean, if you want to build a great relationship with your constituents, ones that's really diverse, you want to make sure that you're doing on the ground work and building trusting relationships with the people that you preach two minutes. Um, I'd like to make a general comment. Um, okay. Again, I just want to make sure that in order to strengthen your relationship with the community, you're not going to do that by investing more money into the police department. That needs to come. We need to focus more on community policing, uh, making sure that we're providing resources that's accessible to the community members and that we're out there building trusting relationships with the people that you serve. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Margarita. I've been told by Matthew Wood, he was just here to listen. So next we have Michael Brock, followed by uh, Piper Stevens. Michael? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Hi, um, I just want to, of course, reiterate and um, you know, boost the messages that have already been conveyed by um, my fellow residents. I think that um, we should actively look at defunding the police and make a point of not only, you know, extending the year increase um, indefinitely, but uh, really look at diverting some of those funds to housing, to transportation, to other really important issues that um, don't involve involve the the kind of 
blatant criminalization that we saw with the enactment of the curfew, with the the equipment and the way that the, the police are showing up the last few weeks and in general, and most importantly, in their treatment of communities of color. Um, I recognize seeing all of you on video that you're uncomfortable and that we've been here for almost three hours and that we're not going to be done anytime soon. And I think you should be uncomfortable. And I want you to recognize that discomfort and sit with it. Thank you. That's my comment. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Um, next, we have Piper Stevens, followed by uh, Tim. No last name, Piper Stevens. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Hi, my name is Piper Stevens. Um, I'm also commenting on the budget, and I am a Salt Lake City resident. Uh, I mostly just want to reiterate what most of the people have said before. Um, I think that increasing the Salt Lake Police Department budget is unnecessary. Um, uh, but I would also like to acknowledge and thank the council member who spoke before for filling me and I'm sure a lot of other people in on information that I wasn't previously aware of. So thank you for that. Um, and that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Piper. Um, next, we have Tim, uh, dot, 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 Tim, followed by Tegan Robinette. Tim? Oh, Tim has let me know he is just here to listen. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Tim. Uh, we have Tegan Robinette, followed by so Sonia Nish. Tegan? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just here to listen as well. All my sentiments have been um, expressed by all the other commentators. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Robinette. Amanda, who's next? It looks like it's Sonia Ninchi, oh. Minsky. I apologize while I was muted. Uh, we have next Sanja Nishki followed by Scott Cohen Pope. Sanja? Oh, she is. Let me know. She's just here to listen. Thank you, Sonia. Um, then we have Scout Cohen Pope followed by Sadie Asbridge. Scout? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, my name is Scout. I'm a white resident of Salt Lake City. I'm also a master's student at the University of Utah. I'm commenting on the proposed budget. Um, I want to start by acknowledging Ashley's story told early in this time. I want to thank you, Ashley, for your vulnerability. And I also want to thank the many passionate speakers who have come before me. I'm so moved and inspired by my fellow citizens. In the wake of the police murder of George Floyd, so many Black Americans before him and the violent police murder of Bernardo Palacios in our own backyard just last week, I'm asking you to show your commitment to racial justice by reallocating next year's $84 million police budget to emphasize care and not cops. The people of Salt Lake City are here asking you to invest in the universal needs of your most vulnerable, like quality housing for all, universal access to healthy food, financial and economic support, climate justice, free and quality public transit, public health, and mental health support. We want the city to divest from traditional policing, investing instead in those most vulnerable. And to facilitate this, again, I demand a decrease in the police budget by at least $30 million. I want to make clear to you, and I think you know that your failure to listen to your constituents does not mean that we will give up we will continue to make our voices known. And I also have a general comment. I want to express my disappointment with the mayor and the curfew. Curfews do not keep communities safe. They make allowances for harm and violence towards that, those most vulnerable in Salt Lake. Thank you for your time. 
Thank you, Scout. Um, next, we have Sadie Asbridge followed by Ryan Gall. Sadie? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Hey. So I'm Sadie Asbridge. I'm a student at the University of Utah, and um, I also live and work in Salt Lake City. I love Salt Lake City, and I've been proud to see everyone protesting and coming together. Um, and I just wish that our budget reflected more our values as a community. I would love to see our budget showing that we care more about public health, especially public transport for low income areas who are disproportionately affected by environmental racism. And again, I would like to um, cut the police budget, which is $84 million. If I'm correct, I'm looking at the um, public document right now. Um, I think that the militarization of police is terrifying, and I, I don't think it contributes to a safe environment in our community, especially for those of our community experiencing homelessness. And um, I just really wish those funds could go for some COVID-19 relief, especially like some of the people who've spoken previously have said, if we're expecting a second wave, unemployment's just gonna rise and it's really a time to invest all the money that we can into caring for our community. And uh, yeah, that's, that's all I have to say. So thank you for taking the time to listen to all of us. Thank you, Sadie. Um, next, we have Ryan Gall, followed by Timothy McDowell. Ryan? Hello, Ryan. Hello, Ryan? I, apo I apologize, we can't hear you. I'll troubleshoot. Um, in that case, we will move forward with Timothy McDowell. Tim? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Hey, my name's Tim McDowell. I've lived in Utah for 20 years and in city center for four going on five years. The councilman at the beginning of this, uh, this, this meeting said that this issue should not be politicized and that there shouldn't be the picking of sides. She implied that the protests should improve unity. The goal of these protests are not to inspire unity with the police force. This issue is politicized and you must pick a side. Do you support increasing police oversight, oversight by and accountability to the community through common sense measures such as requiring always on body cams, removing fear as a valid excuse for police use of lethal force, establishing civilian oversight bodies and demilitarizing as well as reducing funding to the police force. Do you support the 2019 decision to ban community control of the police? I believe a strong first step is defunding the current police force by the tune of $30 million as has been suggested before me and implementing a hiring freeze. Massive reform is required locally, not only nationally, and it is demanded immediately. Week-long curfews don't address the problem, it only suppresses voices. It sends the message that protesting is allowed only when it is convenient. Worse, Mayor Mindenhall earlier this afternoon walked us through how difficult it is for the police to work such long hours at our protests and that they need a break to avoid heat exhaustion. So, partially, the message is that protesting against the police is allowed so long as it is convenient for those police. Greater oversight and accountability over the people's police force is required for even a semblance of justice to be achieved for the oppressed peoples in our city. I look forward to seeing decisions around the people's demands being made and the use of tools of suppression to be rolled back. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Um, next, we have Robinson Vaught, followed by Olivia Kavapalu. Robinson? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Let me see. I have to. Uh... Uh, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Okay. Hi. Uh, so uh, my name is Nina Vo. Um, uh, Robinson is was using my computer and he put in his name. But um, I really want to um, begin by saying um, thank you for this forum, um, for allowing us to remind you that uh, you are our representatives, and um, that um, this for I'd love to see this forum continue to be used. Um, even after COVID-19. I want to make a comment on the budget. Um, in a pandemic, it's pretty jarring to see images of police so well equipped 
and with the uh, uh, opposite of seeing our um, um, healthcare professionals begging for equipment. Um, so I would love to see a cut uh, to um, the police budgets so that they do not uh, look like a militarized force. Um, we need um, uh, police training. Um, we need um, them to be part of our neighborhoods. We need them to have anger management. Um, we need them to be um, uh, learn uh, de-escalation, um, which I'm glad is part of all of that, um, uh, what you're planning on doing already. Um, and we need more funding, uh, obviously, for our neighborhoods and housing and education. And uh, um, I think that um, if the police uh, want more funding, they need to earn it uh, by showing that the training that they're getting is effective. I also want to make a comment. Um, first of all, I want to say how astounding it is to hear the unity of the commentators. Um, I have heard that there are mayors that are being bullied by police into doing such things as curfews and other things that are really not in the best interest of those who are being represented. And I hope that our comments uh, will give you some pushback if there is some um, pressure uh, that any of you are receiving uh, from the police. <clears throat> I think that the curfew does not allow uh, people who are disenfranchised to speak. And I think that um, that curfew was very poorly timed and I think it should be lifted because it disenfranchises those voices we need to hear the most. Um, I think that, that, that we need justice for Bernardo Palacios. His death is tragic and it's a repeated pattern for why police do not deserve an increase in budget. And I'm pro snacks. Thank you. Oh, uh, one more general comment uh, from my son who was at the protest. Can you guys hear us? All right, so uh, I just want to make a comment about that. I was at both uh, last night's protest and the protest before, and I saw some really disturbing things. I saw a lot of people on the very front lines against the police officers, but I only saw the black people there being shot by the less than lethal munitions. I also saw, saw a black person put his hands up and when, when the police approached him, he laid on the ground and there's a video of this and then he was shot by a less, a less than lethal munition, whatever that means, while he was on the ground, defenseless, with his hands up, not causing any trouble to any of the police officers. I also have seen in these protests multiple times that the, the civilians there are the ones de-escalating while the police refuse to de-escalate and do things like tap their sticks, taunting the, the people. And it's, it's, it's horrible to see the, 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 the protesters having to do the de-escalation because the police seem incapable of it. That's all. I yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Um, and Robinson, if your son could share his name, we would appreciate it. Uh, Grady Vo. Grady. Thank you very much, Grady. Happy to. Um, next, we have Olivia Kavapalu, followed by Miles Varga. Olivia? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Hi, my name is Raylani Kavapalu, and I'm a Pacific Islander student and employee at the University of Utah, as well as a resident of Salt Lake City. $84 million. That is more than three times the amount this council has proposed to allocate to housing. $84 million. That is 21 times more than what this council has proposed to spend on public transit. Bolstering the police force seems to be three times more important than providing equitable housing and 21 times more important than a just transit system. It is no secret that the public transportation system fails the black and brown communities who are primarily concentrated in South Salt Lake. By choosing to fund the same police officers who disproportionately over police these communities 21 times more than the transportation that the South Salt Lake residents need proves to me that the city of Salt Lake has failed its communities of color and will continue to do so given this proposed budget. It's not that these po police are ineffective. In our community, they are harmful. 
the SLCPD have shown via the murder of Bernardo Palacios and countless other black and brown residents of SLC, and the history of policing is a history of violence can, against the marginalized. Police departments were originally created to dominate and criminalize communities of color and poor white workers, a job they continue to do every day. This list has only expanded to include LGBTQIA plus folks, people with disabilities, activists. So many of us are attacked by cops on a daily basis. I echo previous demands to decrease the budget by $30 million and allocate those funds to public transit and rent relief. This money would also be have a much better impact in fighting COVID-19 infection rates, which as you could have guessed, infect the Black, Latinx, and Pacific Islander communities the most. Council members, now is your chance to attempt to end the vicious cycle of poverty, over-policing, and oppression that have, that have pervaded communities of color in SLC for far too long. Communities of color are watching. The Salt Lake City residents are watching. The world is watching. Please end the abhorrent destruction of our communities now. Vote to decrease the overpolicing and bring the justice that I and my fellow POC of the Salt Lake City community residents and community residents have too long deserved. And I'd like to make Let's a general comment. Polo, reach two minutes. Yes, I'd, I'd like to make a general comment. Um, okay. I would like to remind the council members and other callers that the recent images that are circulating of the Salt Lake Police Department and National Guard kneeling in solidarity with the Black Lives Matter Utah protesters did not rectify the loss of Bernardo, Bernardo Palacios. It was merely performative and the scars of over, over policing in our low income communities of color will take much larger systemic overhauls in order to allow the communities to heal. In regards to attendee Chapman's remarks, if the work that the council members have been doing for years was effective or transparent, then the mentioned deaths of Patrick Harmon and Bernardo Palacios would not have happened. Also, please support the snacks. If we can't give our students safe school environments free of gun violence, we can at least feed them a snack. Thank you. Thank you, Amusia. Um, next, we have Miles Varga, followed by Mackenzie Donovan. Miles? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Cool. So I'd just like to make one comment on the uh, proposed budget, particularly the $30 million that are being added. Um, the 30 mil um, I am advocating for a $30 million decrease in the budget, and I want that money to be redirected into schools, public transit, and affordable housing. I think it's... Um, just kind of counterintuitive to put money into a police force that is known for brutalizing our homeless members within the community um, instead of putting that money into actual organizations and departments that are more equitable. Um, I'd also like to make a general comment on the curfew that was imposed by Mayor uh, Aaron Mendenhall. I think that is a flagrant um, violation of our rights to peaceful protest, particularly with what happened last night, um, shooting rubber bullets at um, peaceful protesters. Um, even though they were breaking a curfew that was imposed one minute before 8, 8 p.m. does not give a crowd a proper time to disperse, nor does it give protesters a proper amount of time to realize um, how to peacefully protest in a way such as that. And then police agitation on top of that just further um, just exacerbates the problem. Um, that's all I'd like to say. Thank you for having me and thanks for your time. Thank you, Miles. Um, next, we have Mackenzie Donovan, followed by Colin Green. Mackenzie? Hey, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Um, thank you. I just have a general comment. Um, I just first wanted to say thank you to everyone who spoke before me. Um, I stand in support of each of their individual messages and just want to echo what has already been said. Um, but in addition to those messages, uh, I would like to add pressure on you to um, push for a national database for law enforcement officers who commit unlawful crimes. Um, right now, a cop can uh, murder somebody, get off, go two cities down, and get rehired. Uh, that is not the way it should be. Um, and then on a personal note, I would like to add that I'm about to drive home from work, and I feel uh, fear knowing I will be driving through military enforced zones. And um, I just cannot understand the reasoning behind this curfew. And I want to reiterate that you lift it. Uh, I do not feel protected by our police and I feel afraid of them now more than ever. And um, I know that I'm not alone in this. So uh, thank you for your time and thank you for listening. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, Mackenzie. Um, Colin Green will email his comment. 
So next we have Richard Holman, followed by Mackenzie Bledsoe. Richard. Thank you. First, let me say thanks to the council and especially Mayor Mendenhall for the hard decisions. Right, wrong, or indifferent, it is tough to lead and we appreciate you. Uh, I have several comments with respect to um, the budget and I have a general comment with respect to a request. Uh, what are the Utah Inland Port Authority UIPA tax differential revenues in the city's budget as UIP, UIPA documents indicate such funding will be available in 2020? Is the city using the same revenue estimate? How is such funding being budgeted? How much are increased services to UIPA estimated to cost in upcoming budget years? And how much of that cost is being covered by tax differential? Where is this covered in the budget? Are department budgets and staff being allowed to expand to provide such services? What plans, if any, does the city have to cover such costs if anticipated revenues do not materialize? All of these comments have, by the way, been sent via email. Question two. The proposed budget does not appear to include continuing funding for community-based organization mini grants such as appeared in last year's budget. Such funding has proven essential for community councils to improve their ability to outreach and address diversity and inequity issues. ACE funding does not allow for communities to address these issues with these types of funds. These funds were made available to all city recognized community-based organizations to broaden the base of organizations' abilities to address West Side community issues. By the way, my name is Richard Holman. I'm chair of the West Side Coalition. That probably helps a little bit. Sorry about that. Number three, we tried to identify funds for updating the West Point Small Area Master Plan along 2200 West and could not identify a place in the budget for those funds. The mayor's recognized Mr. tremendous- Rivers, two minutes. Um, I'd like to go ahead with a general comment and get to my request. Uh, the mayor has recognized tremendous inequities between the west side and other parts of the city. Leaders from the west side have met with the mayor to begin characterizing these issues. Where are these inequities defined and where in the budget are the resources associated with addressing these inequities quantified? Um, finally, a request of the council and mayor. The Westside Coalition requests that the mayor and council consider funding for planning and zoning and other relevant city departments to provide training and resources to community councils on how to review, discuss, analyze, and comment on economic development, zoning, and planning proposals. There is a high need for this training given the large number of proposals being submitted for review in the proximity of Westside neighborhoods. The councils need to determine methods by which to do these reviews more efficiently and effectively. We use lay people to respond to plans that developers have spent tens of thousands of dollars on lawyers to lay out a strategy. This is another inequity injuring West Side quality of life. We simply do not have the resources to deal with the onslaught of developer proposals and impacts that are occurring as developers move to the West Side. I thank you for your time and I appreciate your service. Thank you, Richard. Um, next, we have Mackenzie Bledsoe, followed by Co Cover Bingham. Mackenzie? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Awesome. Um, hi, my name is Mackenzie Bledsoe. I use the she series pronouns. Um, I'm a resident of the Salt Lake City and re reside in District 7. Um, I would like to take a general comment about the curfew. Um, I feel like this curfew is a way to continue to oppress Black individuals in an attempt to avoid addressing the problem of pr police brutality. And I, quite frankly, am pretty outraged by this. Um, I demand that the curfew be lifted. Um, I also would like to say that as a white person, I take the time out of my life, my job, and my family to do the work to be an anti-racist -race ally without money. So it saddens me that we're throwing money into the police department to um, continue to be a human being and understand um, others' perspectives. Um, I expect that to be the police department to do the work, and I understand that and understand systematic racism and how it permeates in their work. Um, that concludes my comments for this evening. Thank you, Mackenzie. Um, next, we have Cover Bingham, 
followed by Catherine Van Sleen. Cover. Cover Bingham. We will go ahead and move on to the next person. Um, we have Catherine Van Sleen, followed by Catherine Mulliken. Catherine Van Sleen. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Great. Um, so I'm a homeowner in Salt Lake City. Uh, I'm a graduate of the U of U. And I'm here to make some comments of my own accord on the proposed budget and make a general comment as well. I want to support the statements of my peers and echo many of them in telling you that the increase to the policing budget by nearly 85, sorry, to nearly $85 million for the upcoming fiscal year is in direct conflict with the ideals and the demands of the people of Salt Lake City. Um, and instead, I am, um, along many others, uh, demanding that you vote no to increase the Salt Lake City Police Department budget and to decrease the budget for policing by at least $30 million. Put in place a hiring freeze for the SLCPD for the next year at the very least, not 23 new officers, none. Um, divest from policing on a monetary and ideological level and invest in our communities instead. And very importantly, um, send the National Guard home and demilitarize our police and our communities. And that requires you doing everything within your power to stop the violence that's being enacted on our, on your citizens, on civilians right now. Um, and our communities deserve better than to be terrorized by police. Um, the people of Salt Lake want and deserve a community that's invested in universal needs for our people, like quality education, housing, green spaces, financial, economic welfare services, climate justice, free and quality public transit, public health initiatives, uh, literally anything else. Um, so, uh, and for my general comment, first I want to remind the city council to please be respectful of those who come to speak our minds. Please stay off your phones. Uh, and at least look like you care what we have to say. I'm a teacher and I know when people are <laughs> on their phones during class. Um, it's literally your job. Um, so thank you for your time. Um, but uh, for my uh, general comment regarding the actions of the mayor in response to the protests in the past week, I want to say shame on you, Aaron. Uh, curfews do not keep our communities safe. They target marginalized groups. They expose them to violence, they give weaponized police the authority to arrest and abuse people. They delegitimize movements and their protests while encouraging other citizens to blame protesters for the brutal way the militarized police treat them. And further, this curfew was implemented with nearly no notice, not much clarity, only in English. It disproportionately targeted people of color, working class people, and particularly protesters, and still does. And it was a despicable and cowardly move. And beyond that, it was unconstitutional. Our communities belong to us, and thank you for your time. Thank you, Catherine Van Sleen. Um, next, we have Catherine Mulliken, followed by Brandy Burnham. Catherine Mulliken. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Hi, um, I'd first like to thank all the commenters who've come before me. Um, it's great to see so many people uniting. Uh, to speak out specifically on the issue of police brutality in Salt Lake City. First, I'd like to thank Ashley Hamilton for sharing her story. Um, it was very vulnerable um, and very, very good to hear um, people sharing their personal stories of police atrocities that are committed in the city. Um, I would like to call for the reduction of the 2020-2021 budget of the SLPD by at least $30 million and would hope for a future of defunding the police in order to reallocate funds toward community-supported safety systems that center the 
desires and needs of specific communities throughout Salt Lake, specifically of Black communities. Um, I would also hope to see, um, I would like to just address Mr. Chapman's comment from earlier, um, specifically about increasing police presence in parks, as I think this is a very bad idea, um, as that presence is largely used to arrest people who are living in those parks or taking using those parks for shelter or often become victims of police violence themselves. Um, that's all I have to share. Thank you so much for creating this platform for us. And I would like to see more of these meetings in the future, even after the COVID-19 crisis. Thank you, Catherine. Um, Brandy is here to listen. So next we have Brinley Froelich, followed by Catherine Warsham. Brinley. Brinley has left the meeting. Um, in that case, we have Catherine Warsh. Oh, Catherine has also left. My apologies. Um, next, we have Amy Wynn, followed by Caroline Sue. Amy? Hi, yes. Hi, Amy. Hi. Um, my name is Amy Wynn. I'm a resident and a public school teacher here in Salt Lake City. I am joined by Steve Sprague, Adam Fuller, and Gabriella Gordine, who are all also residents in Salt Lake City. Um, I would like to comment on the usage of funding to implement additional de-escalation training for police officers. As the city council has already um, dedicated funding for implicit bias and de-escalation training, which has not been implemented in a timely manner and in light of recent events has proven, proven to be ineffective, this additional training will not address the systematic racism being exhibited by our police department. The efforts of positive reinforcement for officers who successfully de-escalate is not a solution to these problems. When not using violence against citizens, um, they're supposed to protect should simply be a bottom line standard. The trainings mentioned in the budget amendment six should be replaced with thorough hiring practices, explicit disciplinary measures for officers who have inappropriately used force and other measures that would actually have an impact on the systematic violence and racism in police forces. I do not believe any additional funding should be offered to the police department and would like to echo that funding should be cut. The police department cannot receive more funding as a response to their failure to protect our community. I also believe that the funds should be redirected to public education, which expects budget cuts due to the COVID-19 pandemic. I would also like to add a general comment. I'd like to add that James Rogers board body language and consistent phone usage while the Salt Lake City residents are voicing their concerns on such a sensitive and important topic is extremely disrespectful and inappropriate. Aaron Mendenhall, as for your curfews, an 18 year old was tackled and arrested on Saturday um, during the protests for being out past curfew and she was homeless. And that would uh, conclude my comment. Thank you, Amy. Um, next, we have Carolyn Sue, followed by Chris Sanger. Carolyn. Um, we will go back to her. She's having some audio issues. Um, we will go next to Chris Sanger, followed by Claire Taylor. Chris? Hi. Uh, I have a... Oh. Hello, Chris. Hey. hey. Need you to turn. Yeah. Uh, I have a general comment to make. The deployment of the National Guard and the imposition of curfew with guidance from the Salt Lake City Police Department and Governor Herbert is a direct attack on our right and moral obligation to free speech, peaceable assembly, and to petition our government for redress of grievances. As stated by the Salt Lake City Police Detective Gray Wilking in the Salt Lake Tribune, no residents have been arrested for violating curfew that were not part of the protest, and they likely won't be picked up by police. This is a clear official statement that police are planning on unevenly enforcing the curfew, thereby explicitly discriminating through arresting people of color and individuals the state has deemed disagreeable. Currently, Salt Lake City has one of the most extensive curfews in the nation. Police clearly have the tools at hand to stop any damage or violence, as demonstrated repeatedly with rubber, rubber bullets Saturday and again last night. We can protect property and each other without 
without repressing dissent. State's decision to embrace tactics reserved for fascist dictators and failed states causes far more damage than any damage caused by protesters Saturday night. Therefore, I ask the city council and Mayor Mendenhall end the curfew immediately and seriously take heart of what's being asked of you by your citizens. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, next, we have Claire Taylor, followed by Eleanor Winsemann. Claire? Hi, um, I'll be brief since I'll basically echo the majority of the comments you've received today. Um, also, thank you for your time listening to all of our comments. I want you to urge, I want to urge you to reconsider how much you're spending on the police budget and think of the way that you could reallocate that to funds that would actually build up our city, build up our communities, build up affordable housing for people who need it, people that are probably targeted at the, by the police disproportionately, build up their lives instead of building up the people who repress them. Thank you so much. Thank you, Claire. Next, uh, we have Eleanor um, Wynn Simmon, and we will go back to Caroline Sue. Thank you, Eleanor. Hello, Eleanor Winsiman. Uh, we will move on to the next person, unless Eleanor, if you're there. Okay. Um, um, after Eleanor, we have, we'll go back to Carolyn Hsu. Um, Carolyn? Can you speak? Or can, yeah, can everyone hear me? Oh, yeah, thank you. Hi, um, my name is Caroline Sue. I'd like to speak on item G2, the mayor's recommended budget, and to make a general comment as well. I have two main demands of the council members and of Mayor Mendenhall that echo the points made by my colleagues. Number one, I urge you to outfit all on-duty officers with a body-worn camera that is turned on immediately when officers respond to a call. We do not need officers with insufficient de-escalation training outfitted with assault rifles and mine resistant vehicles per purchased through the Pentagon's 1033 program and further militarization of the police force. What we need is accountability. Number two, I urge you to propose and vote for a $30 million cut from SLCPD's proposed budget. This money should go to providing mental health resources to those who need it most and to bolstering the woefully insufficient budget allocations to housing and transit a measly one fourth and one twentieth of what has been proposed for the police department, respectively. Please reflect on the downstream impacts of your actions and your inaction, city council members and Mayor Mendenhall, especially when these impacts disproportionately affect black and brown communities in this city. I'd like to remind everyone who is listening of the white supremacist origins of the institution of the police in this country, which was created to protect the economic interests of slave owners particularly by physically and psychologically terrorizing enslaved Black Americans, even after they were freed. This is the exact dynamic we're seeing play out in the violence that SLCPD has incited against peaceful protesters, physical and psychological terror enacted against citizens attempting to exercise their First Amendment rights. As my colleague noted, this violence has often been targeted towards Black folks peacefully participating. And for my general comment, respectfully, if this police behavior is a function of council members and Mayor Mendenhall's efforts to decrease police brutality, as mentioned by previous caller Chapman, we must do more. This is not enough. I understand that some folks think you, think you can catch more flies with honey, but right now there's no time for pleasantries. Black people in this country have been peacefully advocating for their liberation for centuries. This is dire. People are dying and being traumatized at your hands. Should you choose not to defund the police, you will be morally and causally responsible for this harm. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Carolyn. Um, next, we have call-in user 40, followed by Aaron Moore. Call-in user 40, um, are you there? Call-in user 40, last four digits, is 4620. Hi, this is Miguel. Can you, um, I'm assuming you can hear me, so I'm just going to continue. Again, uh, kind of talking on the same topics, I echo what everyone has said. And I think it is really important to keep in mind that 
for all of you council members as elected officials, I think uh, even if personally you may not agree with, uh, and I'm not saying that's the case, I, I don't know where you guys stand specifically, but I do want to emphasize that as elected council members, you guys are hearing from your constituents and as, again, public officials, even if you don't personally agree with this, I think it's important that you represent and act upon the voices of your constituents. So please keep that in mind, the overwhelming majority of the voices that are expressed here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and would you mind repeating your name one more time? Sure, it is Miguel Diaz. Thank you very much, Miguel. Um, next, we have Aaron Moore, followed by Evangeline Amadou. Aaron? Hi. Hello, Aaron. We can hear you. Uh, I'm a resident of District 1. Um, I had two issues um, under Item 2 mainly with the proposition of allocating funds for de-escalation training and bias training. Um, I feel like if those funds were a result, I feel like uh, if those were a result of extra funding to the police in general, that the purpose of the training would be defeated before they even began. Uh, the SLCPD has shown time and time again that they do abuse their power and our funding by using lethal force and funding them more would only result in their sitting through de-escalation trainings idly while still getting paid. Um, cities like Minneapolis have used de-escalation de training and found no change in uh, the violence uh, done by their police officers to their citizens. Uh, not only do I feel that they do deserve the funding they, they, they do not deserve the funding they have, they do not deserve more, and that there has to be something on the line for them to even take it seriously if they do go through training for de-escalation and bias training. Uh, something to gain back like access to funding for them to feel any reason to actually take de-escalation training seriously. Uh, my second concern is that we have some information on what de-escalation training would even look like. Um, would it include police still being able to use non-lethal weapons like rubber bullet guns and tasers? The use of those weapons along with tear gas do nothing to de-escalate situations since they still harm, traumatize, and in situations like protests cause panic and fear. I propose that along with the budget cuts, there are limitations on the use of weapons, both lethal and non-lethal. So the fact that rubber bullets can expose your, explode your eyeball, um, as has happened to protesters in other cities, doesn't seem to deserve a word as innocent as non-lethal. Um, I think there needs to be a complete reevaluation about the tools that police have access to, and how they, how they use them, and how they can and do abuse them. Uh, this, this evaluation, I think, can go along with the time period, with the same time period of uh, defunding for the police. Um, that's all I have to say, really, on that subject. Um, I wanted to emphasize that they just really do not need an increase in budget and in fact would benefit from a budget decrease. Ms. Moore, um, we've reached two minutes. Okay, can I um, add a general comment? Yes. Okay, um, I just wanted to say if uh, the proposed budget, uh, since the proposed budget for the police does supersede by so much uh, the budget for housing, that I think that that would add to, um, that would lend to almost immediately an increase in uh, police arresting and um, harassing homeless people because if we aren't addressing the housing crisis, more and more people are going to continue to be homeless. And with more people on the streets, those people turn to criminal activities to support themselves necessarily so they can survive. And uh, police will just end up having to police them and put them in jail and overcrowd our jails, which serves no one um, and keeps homeless people in a cycle of poverty. Uh, and I also wanted to note that if Aaron Mendenhall wants to continue to send out these like awful <laughs> notifications every single night uh, that we can't go out after eight, they should probably come in before nine o'clock at night. Um, I don't know. My uh, it just doesn't really make sense if you're gonna have a have a curfew. Maybe send the notification out on time for people who actually don't know what's going on. Uh, that's all I have to say. Um, thank you for staying up so late and listening to all of us. I know that you must be tired. But we're also all tired, um, and that's why we're all here, clearly. So thank you. That's it. Thanks. Thank you, Erin. Um, to give a quick update on where we are in the queue, um, we have just gone through comment 168. Um, and 
our list, we still have 233, although some users have have left. Um, Council uh, Chair, did you get that by chance? Yes, I did. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Moving forward, we have call in user number nine, um, uh, followed by um, James Porter. Um, call in user number nine, are you there? Hi, uh, can you hear me? Uh, yes, if you could state your name and then give your comment, we can hear you. Okay. Hi, my name is William Santi, and uh, I live in Salt Lake City. I would also like to comment on the mayor's recommended budget. Um, police do not need paramilitary gear to deal with unarmed protesters. One of my friends that attended the protest on Saturday had her wrist fractured by a rubber bullet. This is unacceptable. I propose a cut in the police budget of at least $30 million and an immediate hiring freeze for new police in Salt Lake City. Instead, I propose those funds are allocated towards education, affordable housing, social work, and if possible, to expand our medical infrastructure during this growing pandemic. And uh, for my general comment, I would also like to condemn the curfew. It's only added to the danger for protesters and has infringed on their ability to peacefully protest. Additionally, it puts people of color at risk just for existing in the city, and that's the exact opposite effect that should be desired right now. Thank you for your time. Thank you, William. Um, next, next we have uh, Kelsey Harrison, followed by Michael Allen. Kelsey? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Hi. Um, yeah, I won't, I won't reiterate except to say that I would if they hadn't. Um, my comments um, that exceed that point, I think, are just along the lines of, um, I just want to, I just want to put my perspective out there in terms of, um, how I think of a representative's job. I know that like you absolutely know what that is, but it feels when you when you invoke the National Guard against protesters that you're very interested in stopping change from occurring when it seems very much the position to facilitate that change rather than to stand in its way. Uh, that riot gear looks pretty expensive. I live on the corner of uh, third and third. So the the basically the corridor between Fifth East and and Second East on First South has become a homeless encampment. And to see money allocated that way in that sort of uh, material terms was pretty pretty upsetting. Um, a couple general comments that are um, all over the board. Um, I think I've been to these city meetings before, and WebEx is generally a pretty inaccessible platform. I'm a professor at the U. We learned how to teach classes online in a week. And we use Zoom and have very few problems. Um, I don't know if it's this contract with the state, but it has been like a pretty big roadblock to participation in some of these meetings. Um, yeah, and lastly, I wanna echo the, I've really just been waiting around to echo the, the comment on James Rogers' behavior in this entire meeting has been just kind of unbelievably dismissive and disdainful. I, I, I'm pretty blown away to see him leave the frame, to see him text, to see him visibly laughing at protesters' comments. So District 1, if you're in the room, take note of who your, who your representative is and make a different choice. All right, thank you. That's, that's all for me. Thank you very much, Kelsey. Um, I apologize to James. I believe I missed you. James Porter will go next, followed by uh, Michael Allen. James. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is James Porter. Porter. I have Morgan Mickles here in the room. I would like to make a comment on the budget and then a general comment. Um, previous caller Chapman urged you to speak as to who you are. So I would like to speak as to who I am. I am a Latin man who is two times more likely to die at the hands of the police. That pales in comparison to my black peers 
we're three times more likely to die at the hands of the police. I disagree wholeheartedly with this budget. I am for defunding the police, not just by 30 million, but completely. It is a system of oppression and racism. We need a system for the people, by the people, not against the people as we currently have. As far as my general comment, I understand that defunding the police won't happen tomorrow. I do know that there is a community advisory board, but I believe that needs to undergo a reform and become a community review board. Currently, the community advisory board allows suggestions to be made to the chief of police, Mike Brown. However, he holds the final say on disciplinary actions against the police. A community review board should have the power to enact disciplinary actions against police. To put it in perspective, criminals do not write the laws and outline the punishment for their crimes. With this current methodology, wherein Mike Brown, Chief Mike Brown holds all the power, the police can act as the judge, the juror, and the executioner for themselves. Statistics have shown that of the police killings that have happened, 99% go uncharged. That is wrong. We cannot have or expect the police to hold themselves accountable for their actions. Lastly, I wanna echo the caller before me. James Rogers is for District 1, a district made up of a lot of minorities, a lot of people of color like myself. Your actions are absolutely deplorable and you should be ashamed. Thank you for your time. Thank you, James. Um, next, we have Michael Allen, by, followed by Benjamin Pock. Michael. Uh, Council Member Anna, can you hear me? I, I wanted to start off maybe lightening the mood. Uh, I've seen your cat, very cute. I'm happy to see them participating in uh, our civic engagement. Um, and then for my comments, um, <laughs> There's a general one, or there's police budget, budget and then a general one. Um, comments are my own. In January of 2019, the Office State of the Auditor released a performance audit of police officer standards and training. I believe this is for the state, but I'm confident it's relevant to Salt Lake City as well. Um, they found discipline for peace officer misconduct appears lenient. Peace officer dishonesty undermines credibility and effectiveness. Law enforcement agencies uh, failed to report some cases of misconduct as required by law. For example, Disciplinary action for falsification of government records resulted in revocation of licenses 95% of the time in other examined states, while 0% of offenders in our state had licenses revoked and instead received letters of caution or suspensions of licenses lasting three years or less. For domestic violence assault, revocations were 89% of cases in other states versus 0% for Utah. I think that's an unacceptable disparity. Um, I propose the police budget equal its pre-audit level of uh, $74.4 million and it not exceed $70.4 million until Salt Lake City can document that their disciplinary actions for police misconduct are equal or greater than the other states reported in the audit. Um, and then a general comment. I do wanna say I'm a public servant. I work for the state. Um, your jobs are very hard. It's hard to meet the demands of people. Thank you for listening to all of us. Um, in my free time, I have reviewed public comments given by citizens to governmental agencies. I, all, I often find that the level of technical language required to actually affect governmental processes is lacking from us citizens. Legal language is exact, deliberate, and it often is unfamiliar to lay people. This lack of technical knowledge on how to comment ends up in a substantial portion of citizen statements that result in no changes to governmental processes. That's my observation. Um, I think it's very sad. I believe all of you wanted to join this council because you love the city and you want to make it uh, better. You want to make it better. Um, so even if I or we are not commenting in the exact way that could actually affect the police budget, it's obviously how people feel tonight. Um, the sentiment of those speaking is clear. I encourage the city to listen to our voices and make concrete budget decisions that respect, uh, reflect their constituents' desires to reduce the police budget. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. Um, next, we have Benjamin Pock, followed by Marianne Schell. Benjamin? Hello, Benjamin Pock. Uh, I will go ahead and move to the next person. 
Um, unless Benjamin, you're there. Okay, um, moving on, we have Marianne Shell, followed by um, Lou McKee. Marianne? Yeah. Marianne, are you there? I see um, you're here in the chat. Can you speak? Uh, we will go ahead and troubleshoot audio with Marianne. Um, next, we have Lou McKee, followed by Mar Mari Duran. Lou? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Thank um, you. This is Lou McKee. Um, some of you do know me. Um, I'm a community organizer and builder. I'm an elder in the Afro-Indigenous community. And um, I'm very, very appalled at the, the behavior of this administration. Um, I did not vote for you, Mayor Mendenhall. And I felt a great fear when you were elected and a foreshadowing of what I'm experiencing today. I was a resident of District 5, but because of police brutality and the violence that I experienced daily in the ballpark district, I was forced to move to District 4, in which, Anna, you are my representative, and your lack of uh, commitment to the Black and Brown community will be duly noted here. Um, and uh, can you not hear me? Is it, is that better? Yeah, much better. Okay, uh, I don't know where I left off in hearing me, but but knowing that you are neutral and you are now my representative, um, it, it's uh, I I want to echo the statements. We need to have community led economic development in the West Side, um, and the fact that James Rogers is more concerned about the inland port than his most vulnerable citizens, and his apathy toward his district. Um, by supporting the inland port um, has been absolutely spoken volumes to us. And we see that you don't care about the people on the west side. Um, it's, it's very, very notable uh, in your attitude, your body language. And I would demand that rather than uh, spending more on the police, that we have something tantamount to what Provo has, uh, an actual community-led economic development center for the black and brown community that is specifically Ms. McKee, for the two side. Minutes. Okay, and my general statement, um, again, I uh, would like to propose that we definitely have an economic development plan for Rose Park to prevent a gentrification. It does not seem that our current administration is sufficiently informed about the needs of the community that she claims to represent and serve. And I feel so far, this administration has served the needs of the corporate elite, uh, the business developers at the expense of black and brown bodies and at the expense of the unsheltered. It surprises me that there is sufficient um, money available for militarized force, and yet we did not have those resources available, and it was up to the community, the take shelter community, which I personally manned a warming station the entire winter as a homeless, disabled, brown individual because your administration failed to meet the needs of the unsheltered community. Now, we know empirically that if you invest in the economics, then you have less crime in your city. And the most vulnerable population is in the West Side. They're the ones who are being affected by COVID the most. They're the ones who are being targeted the most by police. They're the ones who are experiencing violence. The fact that gun that police violence exceeds gang violence and even child murder should lead you to fire Chief Brown. The, the disparity in reaction and the lack of compassion for those that he's supposed to protect and serve, and yet his only emotional response were for the police officers who were armed to the teeth, who had no fear for their actual lives, as opposed to all of the unarmed people who came to 
peacefully protest. I cannot tell you how many hours with the extended family of Bernardo Palacios that I have had to put in myself personally as a community leader and an elder in the indigenous tradition that we are. For two minutes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lou Michelle. Appreciate your comments. Thank you, Lou. Um, next, we have Mari Duran, and we will try again with Marianne Shell. Mari Duran. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Um, I've been a resident of Utah and Salt Lake my life. Um, even my great grandparents were. Um, some of the first homeowners in Rose Park specifically. Um, and I also want to honor the indigenous land that we're on when talking about these things. I usually am not um, inclined to talk to many politicians, but um, that clearly hasn't been working. So I am here, um, at least trying to. I definitely want to say that <laughs> I think the defunding of police should happen completely. I do not think they are helpful to our communities at all. Um, so the $30,000 that most people are recommending, I think is even outrageous that we're thinking of compromising that at this point. Um, I think they need to completely be defunded by Salt Lake City. Um, I also have a dear uh, queer trans person missing right now um, from our community and the police have been extremely unhelpful. We have asked for their resources for this and I, I just don't know how police are supposed to be of help um, to any of the problems that we're seeing. I'm also seeing that in the last, um, in the last meeting that there's about over a hundred thousand dollars coming from natural resources to be given to police um, in order to, to protect the the Jordan River, which I think is absolutely ridiculous. Um, and I know these are things that may have already been contracted, but I just don't see how these large sums of money can yes, be going to these things. Two minutes. Thank you. I'll give my general comment. Um, yeah, I just don't see how money continue to go to these things when they have just, in my personal life, have, have never been helpful. I think we're seeing a large amount of young people saying the exact same things tonight, um, not only tonight virtually, but in our streets the last couple of days. And I really just hope that this really can get to you folks somehow, or to even think for the white folks that are part of this chat, what what is it that your actual physical presence is is bringing? Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mari. Um, next, we will go back to Marianne Shell, and then after that, we will go to Benjamin Pock. Marianne, can everyone hear me? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Awesome. Hey, everyone. My name is Marianne Shell. I am the Black Student Union President at the University of Utah. All views are my own, and what I say does not reflect the University of Utah or my organization. I am begging you, the council, to take a better look at the budget. Please cut the Salt Lake City Police Department budget by at least $30 million. Our Black men and women are being murdered daily at the hands of cops and racists and you all have the audacity to give more money to the same cops that are murdering us. As a black woman, I fear that my own taxpayer dollars are being allocated to kill my black brothers and sisters, and I'm not going to let you all get away with making that very stupid decision. And I do have a, a general comment as well. Um, we are all you know, calling in today, and it sounds like you know, we're being repetitive, and I know you, you all have been here for a very long time, but that's really what it's like to be like, a black person living in the United States. Being a black person is always repeating that your life matters. Being a black person is repeating that you are not a threat to society. Being a black person is repeating that your skin is not a weapon. And being a black person is repeating that you can't breathe. And I appreciate your small gestures of hanging up your little Black Lives Matter posters, 
but if it really mattered, we would not be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Marianne. Um, next, we have Benjamin Pock, followed by Dodd Moomin. Benjamin? Hi. Um, first and foremost, I have uh, two things to make. One is about the budget and then a general comment as well. Um, thank you to everyone for doing this and for being here as well. Um, especially, hello, Chris. You were my mentor when I was student body president at Westminster. Thanks for all the work that you're doing. Um, you know, thank you. I've been on this call for about over three hours now, and I was also um, in the work session meeting. And what's clear from your constituents is that not a single person has come to the defense with a budget that you have proposed, and it's wrong. Um, so I, I demand the same thing, the hiring freeze, the, um, the commitment to not hire 23 more officers. You know, it's, it's damning. Um, to see folks in healthcare um, struggle to secure PPEs, but when there is a riot or when there's a protest, we what we saw was an you know an overfunded police force um, and a hyper militant state as well, and that's not okay and should not sit well with any of you um, to throw money to the very people who are oppressing minoritized populations, especially Black folks. Um, you know, don't be complicit in this. Um, the decision to instate a curfew, I believe that that is wrong. You know, the only safeguard that people of color and Black folks have right now is the right to assemble and to protest, and you won't even give them that. I think that that is wrong, and we should do better. Um, uh, and lastly, on the, um, you know, just, uh, general comment, I'm just going to echo the words of Viola Davis um, when she said that racism is built into the DNA of America. As long as we turn a blind eye to the pain of those suffering under its oppression, we will never escape those origins. Um, let's do better. Thank you. Thank you for calling in. It's good to hear from you. Thank you, Benjamin. Um, next, we have Dodd Moomin, followed by Devin Lindley. Dodd? Can you all hear me? Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dodd Moomin. I'm the student body vice president at Westminster College, March for Our Lives board member that believes police violence is gun violence. And most importantly, I'm a community organizer here in Salt Lake City. To begin on the police proposed police budget increase, I am appalled but not surprised. Our elected officials have shown less courage than the protesters on our streets. Mayor Mendenhall writes in one of her recent statements regarding the death of George Floyd that, quote, there is systemic racism in our city that affects our residents every day. We must all come together to intentionally address and dismantle systemic oppression, discrimination, racism, and bigotry in, that exists in our city, end quote. Simultaneously, she proposes this budget. As a black organizer, a $2.2 million increase investment in police funding is a direct and explicit investment towards violence against communities of color, undocumented folks, and our houseless people. Before we had police officers, we had slave patrol. So today, policing continues as a practice that centers property over people and maintains the carceral state by over-policing, then imprisoning brown, poor, and black folks. The state works to legitimize violence and institutionalize racism. We must institutionalize justice in the prioritization of our vulnerable communities. Ending overly aggressive policing and discriminatory policing, increasing accountability and transparency, and mending the relationship between the community and the police must cannot be accomplished with a $84 million ridiculous budget. Our community and leaders should look to value community violence intervention programs instead of solely relying on the police. I hope that the council members put Mayor Mendenhall's lip service for social justice into action and policy by not voting for the increased budget. My general comment is this. Mayor Mendenhall and Governor Herbert stood in solidarity against us. Calling the National Guard and implementing a curfew shows that you simply do not care about protesting. Mayor Mendenhall is, and I quote, grateful for another day of passionate protest, end quote, but protests that are only within her control. 
Protesters should not have the, your permission to peacefully assemble. When I first met Mary Mendenhall, she promised to me a leadership of justice and with the community. And she sits here enforcing a curfew with officers that smiled in my face as I expressed my hurt and anger peacefully. You can, you can tell from my strained voice that I am tired of screaming, shouting, and demanding that my people be treated as human. An increased SLCPD budget is not productive to this goal. Until there is no justice, there is no peace. Until Mayor Mendenhall recognizes the need for a $30 million budget decrease, your goal of tackling racial justice is merely lip service and a PR stunt that Salt Lake City will no longer accept. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Thank you, Dowd. Um, next, we have Devin Lindley, followed by Molly Levine. Devin? Hi, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, one moment. Hi, Devin. Hi, can you hear me? Uh, yes, thank you. Okay. Hi, I'm calling to say, um, as many others have said, that I don't support the current budget. And I would also like to address that um, only 1.6 million covers the proposed increase. So um, we're all wondering where the rest goes. And I want to see that budget for SLCPD be cut by at least $30 million and place that money literally anywhere else. Um, I'd like to say shame on our mayor for targeting, uh, especially the working class and POC folks with this current curfew that's in place, uh, it should be lifted immediately. And our city needs to be demilitar demilitarized. And I would also like to say, I've personally also been here for the past hours with all of you. And I'm incredibly disappointed by your lack of interest and attention at this time. Um, it's been completely disappointing. And I'm so proud of my community for calling in tonight and taking up your time with incredibly valid issues. And I hope we've kept you bored and occupied. And uh, to the mayor, especially, uh, if we can't be in our streets tonight, I'm so happy we could be here taking up your time. That's it, thank you. Thank you for your comments. Thank you very much. Um, next we have Molly Levine, oh wait. Molly Levine and then Natasha Wong, if I'm correct. Hi there. Um, my name is Molly Levine. I've lived in Salt Lake City District 3 all of my life and still live there. I will keep this brief because I echo all those before me regarding defunding the SLCPD budget and investing into our community. Um, and I just wanted to add to the collective voices. Please recognize the volume of voices begging for action and change, whether or not you believe that this is necessary, because it is clear the people you represent do. We are watching you now more than ever, council mem members and Mayor Mendenhall. You should know we are watching. Action must be taken or else the BLM signs you are displaying are incredibly performative. Show us how much Black Lives Matters in your real actions, not your little signs. The curfew absolutely has to end, Mayor Mendenhall. You know it's too heavy-handed for this community, and it is not too late to take this back. Do better, Mayor Mendenhall. Democracy is difficult and messy. However, right now, all of these voices are making it pretty clear what you guys have to do. Thank you. Um, let's see. Ah, okay. Also, sure, I apologize for the audio issues we're experiencing. Um, let's see. One moment, please. Ah, there we go. Okay, thank you everyone for that technical issue. Um, or excuse me for that. <laughs> oh, my ears. Uh, sorry, everybody. Uh, and thank you, Molly, for your comment. Next, um, we have uh, Natasha Wong followed by Rachel Schmidt. Natasha? Um, hi, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Natasha Wong. I've been living in Salt Lake my whole life. 
Um, and I'd like to echo a lot of what other people have already been saying um, about thoughts on the budget. Um, I don't think 84 million going toward policing is appropriate or worthwhile. Um, additionally, I would like to point out um, sort of in tandem with the mayor and the council and police department's recent statement on transparent policing and their commitment to, and I quote, addressing and dismantling systemic oppression, um, that we move past just um, instituting reforms in Salt Lake, as we've seen in Minnesota and other states around the country. Um, reform does not um, really solve the root of the issue. And so in addition, um, to cutting back on funding for the police department. I also encourage that we suspend the use of paid administrative leave for officers who are under investigation, um, that we withhold pensions and don't rehire officers who are involved with excessive uses of force, that we require that cops are held liable for any misconduct settlements on their part, that we cap overtime pay and the accrual of overtime for militarized training and exercises for police, um, that we withdraw police participation in militarization programs, um, and that we, prior, that we prioritize spending on social services, reduce the overall size of police, um, and also reduce overall funding for carceral institutions, which is where a vast majority of police brutality does happen. Um, rather than attempting to reform a systematically racist institution through body cams, training, um, and reforms which ultimately funnel more money toward policing, um, money that could be better put toward social services like housing, education, um, supporting homeless populations um, and public health, I encourage you to work toward a more complete and permanent solution. Um, if we want safer communities, we should address the issues at the root that produce the need for policing in the first place. Um, to, quote, to quote Ruth uh, Wilson Gilmore, a prison abolitionist, we must work toward abolishing the conditions under which prisons become the solution. Yes, We've reached two minutes. I'd like to add a general comment um, to finish um, what I was saying. Um, I think we should work toward abolishing the conditions that in the first place um, present prisons and policing as a solution to our problems. We can and should reinvest this money toward other social programs that can better serve our communities before they come in contact with law enforcement and before crime and policing becomes a problem in the first place. Um, I'd also like to express dissatisfaction with the curfew. I do think it puts um, working class, low income, undocumented homeless populations and people of color at high risk for being targeted by the police. Um, and I hope that you take these comments into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Natasha. Um, next, we have Sai Parswar, followed by Sage Wheaton. Sai. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Hi, my name is Sai Parswar and I'm a resident of Salt Lake City and a student at the University of Utah. I'm also commenting on the budget. I know this has been said many times, but I hope it's a testament to how many of your constituents stand with black and brown people. It's clear that there are discrepancies in your messaging about justice and about the fiscal all allocation presented. These disparities are deep rooted forms of white supremacy and oppression that further the agenda of those from the so highest socioeconomic brackets and those who rise from generational wealth derived from slave ownership. Giving even a bigger budget to the police is perpetuating historical effects of cartel slavery and ultimately forcing black and historically marginalized people further into further cycles of injustice. Your residents deserve better than this. Your lack of intentional care and lack of uh, anti-racist methodologies cost the life of Bernardo Palacios along with countless black and brown bodies in our community. Your budget did this. You did this. I demand that the budget for the police department is decreased by at least 30 million and for hiring uh, for a hiring freeze for SLCPD. Police departments do not need more funding when they're actively killing our black and brown community uh, community members. I also demand that you redistribute these resources to public housing, transportation, community programs and centers, public education, social workers, and other social programs. This isn't just about how police brutality is directly killing our black and brown populations, but how you're indirectly killing our black and brown people. I hope this is a not one-time event where you write Black Lives Matter in the background and leave black people behind. Um, learn to use the tools of racial equity rather than creating a one-time solution. Also, I hope the next time you have meetings like this, you make them more accessible by providing Spanish translations and ASL interpret interpretations. Um, by not making these meetings accessible, you're creating a barrier between yourselves and your constituents, especially those who are more, most disproportionately affected by the policies. Additionally, please stop gendering the attendees. Your language is also making this inaccessible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sai. Um, next, we have Sage Wheaton, followed by Sunila Math. Sage? Hey, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. 
Perfect. Thank you. Um, I just want to say thank you to all of my fellow citizens for staying on the line for this long along with me. Um, your passion is it's really moving and it's really good to see all of these people standing up for uh, something that they believe in. Um, I also am here to talk about the budget and bring up the hypocrisy of giving more money to a police force that continues to show that it has not grown in the ways that you claim to be putting this money towards. We have not been seeing any uh, shortening of killings. And I would also like to point out the fact that a majority of the police force that you were sending out to these protests to peaceful protesters, many of them people of color in our community are white men, many of them middle-aged white men who I doubt have the proper bias training that we are looking for and hoping for. Um, so you are putting the community at risk with these protests. So I would uh, also like to say that the, the curfew as well by Mayor Mendenhall, it seems mostly like a way to save face while continuing violence in the community. If you put a curfew at 8 p.m. while people are peacefully protesting, allowing the police to incite violence and arrest peaceful protesters, you are part of the problem and you are just continuing what other states and other representatives are doing. But who are you trying to protect with this curfew? Who are you really trying to protect by putting this in place? Because I'm also a resident of downtown and I saw the militarized police marched down State Street last night. I saw and I felt and I did not feel safe and I did not feel comfortable. And I know the rest of the residents of this city do not feel comfortable. So I'd like you to really think about who you're trying to protect here and what you're really trying to do. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Sage. Um, next, we have Sunilla Math followed by Shelby Hearn. Sunilla. Hi, can you all hear me okay? Yes, thank you. Yeah, um, my name is Neil Math and I would like to speak out against the budget of 84 million being allocated to the SLPD. I think the community would be better served by funding education, other social services and mental health resources, local hospitals and businesses in light of the current pandemic. Speaking of, are we gonna forget that we're in a pandemic? Are we gonna prioritize our unjust infrastructure over the health of our own community, dismissing the pandemic that disproportionately affects minority groups. The hospital is preparing for a second wave and the least we could do is help them. And I quote you, Mayor Mendenhall from back in March, Salt Lake City knows too well that something like COVID-19 doesn't recognize county lines or city boundaries. And in order to be truly successful in keeping our residents safe and our hospitals functioning, we must act in true partnership as a region and state. So let's keep our residents safe in every aspect. You asked us to think of our neighbors' well-being. We are your neighbors. Think of our well-being, please. We don't need more police. We need more opportunities for a community, such as supporting the education initiative for our currently incarcerated students. The U of U has an amazing program called the U of U Prison Education Project, and they would benefit immensely from additional funding. We can work to reallocate funds to further decrease the need for police in the first place. Crime rates are best fought not by enabling and funding police, but by providing the proper resources to our community leaders and community-based orgs. In regards to the curfew, we all know curfews enable police. I work at the hospital helping with the COVID-19 situation, and I'm afraid to drive through Salt Lake, especially with the presence of police with this curfew. As a person of color, I should not fear the people who claim to protect us. I should not fear leaving my house to help in a national pandemic. We have other priorities. The fight against the policing system is nationwide, but you can help here in our city. It's a small step, but a start. Be a model for other councils. By allowing this unnecessarily large budget to be bestowed to the SLPD, you are remaining silent and choosing not to take action against the injustice the police department commits against black and brown individuals. If the recent protests and unanimous comments haven't spoken wonders already, I wonder what will be enough to make us realize that allowing the police to continue to resume their current practices is complicity. That's all I had to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sunilla. Um, next, we have Shelby Hearn, and then we will go back to Eleanor Winsman. Shelby? Hello, can you all hear me? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Shelby Hearn. I'm an educator and a citizen of Salt Lake City, for not even quite a year now. Um, I'm here today, like many of my other fellow uh, residents of Salt Lake, to talk about the proposed budget, specifically the 84 million proposal for the Salt Lake City Police Department. To put it simply, to propose a budget of that magnitude, it's unacceptable and frankly irresponsible. 
uh, in both the face of unprecedented economic turmoil due to COVID-19 and in light of renewed fights against police brutality, such a budget increase cannot move forward in good conscience. Mayor Mendenhall, I've seen that you voice solidarity with those peacefully protesting for change. Other council members, I see your voices of solidarity here with your Black Lives Matter signs and even your pride flags and your backgrounds. Here is an opportunity for you all to truly stand in solidarity with those who are asking for change and to be agents of change. There is copious research indicating that funding increases to police departments does not better equip these departments to protect their communities. In fact, funding increases are tied to greater uses of unnecessary force as our police are increasingly militarized. And we know that trainings, body cameras, those are not working. They're not actually helping protect folks. They're allowing the police to just continue to uh, use excessive force with impunity. What is shown to lessen, lessen violence and lower crime rates is a greater investment in our community in social programs, in transit, in housing. I urge you all as you make these decisions regarding budgetary um, allocations to do so with knowledge as your, as, your, as your foundation, to look at the research that exists, this empirical research that shows that what you're proposing, what you've already proposed. We've reached two minutes. May I use my uh, general comment? Thank you. Yes, yes, go ahead. What you're proposing to use is police budget four towards greater de-escalation training. Those things do not help. We need to look at defunding police and reallocating money into our community. Um, you know, I echo the previous recommendations for a $30 million decrease, uh, but I want to emphasize that this should not be used as a punitive measure against the Salt Lake City Police Department. Uh, I'm not asking you to ground the police until they know better. I'm asking you to recognize that policing does not protect our most vulnerable communities and that we need to look into other avenues of helping our community flourish and being uh, for people's lives instead of upholding ideas of law and order. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Shelby. Um, next, we'll go to Eleanor Winsaman, um, and then after will be Tess by B. Eleanor? Hey. You should, uh, yeah, let me comment. This is taking a really long time. <laughs> Eleanor? Maybe that makes the more worthwhile. I always Hello, Eleanor yeah. Winsaman? Nice. Eleanor, are you there? This started at 7. It's what time? 11? Where all the spiders exist? Where all the spiders live? Eleanor, can you hear us? Eleanor, do you have a comment? Um, let's put Eleanor on hold and go to the next. Okay, thank you, Chair. Um, we will move to Tess Bybee, followed by Tommy Hamby. Um, Tess? Hi, can you hear me okay? Yes, thank you. Perfect. So I want to echo everybody else's comments. Um, I don't agree with the proposed budget. And in response to the statement that it was partially um, salary increases, and I could be reading this wrong, I went through, read the proposed budget, it seems like it's 1.6 million of a six, or sorry, $84 million budget. And we want to know why so much is being allocated elsewhere, if this is in contract. I also just want to state that the curfew is unconstitutional and it's unfair that we are receiving notices of this after the curfew has taken effect and that it is
Tess, are you there? Are you still there? Um, Chair, if it's okay um, to move to the next person and see if Tess's audio can come back. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Do we, do we Sorry want about that. Oh, that's all I had to say. Oh, oh, thanks, Tess. There you are. Go ahead and finish your, your comments, Tess. Um, I'm not sure what you last heard. Um, I do believe that the curfew is unconstitutional mm -hmm. and it should be um, broadcasted before it's in effect with uh, several translations. That's it. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Thank you, Tess. Do we want to circle back to Eleanor and see if... Um, yes, okay. Um, Oh, Eleanor? Or I'm sorry, that's what I thought the caller before Tess was, but I might have written it down wrong. Oh, that's right, Council Chair. Um, Eleanor Winsiman, if you're there, um, please let us know. Eleanor Winsiman? Okay, let's uh, move okay. on then. We will move on to the next person who is Tommy Hamby, uh, followed by Colin user 61. Uh, last four digits of their phone is 8008. Tommy Hamby. Good evening. Um, if you can't hear me, please speak up. I uh, just want to thank you all for your service and dedication to our community. Um, I have a comment about the budget and a general comment. I just want to echo the unanimous remarks of my fellow community members about reducing funding for the police department. I'm a proud Salt Lake native and resident of District 4. Um, I want to thank all those council members proclaiming the Black Lives Matter. Please honor that message with action. We have an opportunity to transform our community, our society, and our world, and I'm beseeching you to be bold now. What an opportunity for us to be a model for our country. Please do not pass the budget until you have redirected funds from the police department to other agencies that help reduce crime and build community. Police departments don't need to be reformed. They are functioning exactly as they were built, and they must be strategically and thoughtfully dismantled. And that starts with redirecting funds away from the police department. Implicit bias training is woefully inadequate. For my general comment, um, I just have a question. I want us to all consider who are the officer chauvins on our Salt Lake City Police Department. I'd hate to think about what might happen in the future um, when someone else commits an act of atrocity and murder against uh, one of our black brothers and sisters in our own backyard, knowing that we could have done something different. Thank you again for your continued service and dedication to making our community a better place. Good night. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you, Mr. Hamby. Um, next, we have Colin user 61, followed by Jay Swanger. Uh, Colin user 61. Hello. Hi. Uh, can could you? you uh, yes, we can hear you. Could you state your name and then give your comment? Yes, my name is Quinton Monson. Um, I would like to comment on the proposed budget as well as give a general comment. And I would like to start this off by saying that I would like to speak on behalf of all of the incarcerated people that are in jail right now because of decisions that you people have made. People are sitting in jail right now because of you, specifically you, Mayor and Mayor Mendenhall, and I hope you, that when you lay down tonight, I hope you think about that. You guys are all sitting in your own homes while people are in jail because of decisions that you made. You helped the police escalate these protests. You are putting your own constituents in jail so that you can stand behind the police and let them act however they want, okay? I don't have the niceties for you that a lot of these people do because 
they're trying to appeal to better sensibilities that I don't think you have. I hope that you are all ashamed of yourselves. I cannot believe that you would allocate more money to the police in this moment. That is despicable. It is cowardice. And I hope that you all think about that. I hope when you vote on this budget, I hope that you sit in that moment and think about which side you're going to be on. Because you may be able to push it to the back of your mind, but where you stand in this moment will be imprinted into your conscience for the rest of your life. So think about it. Think about what you're doing. That's all I have to say. Thank you for your comments. Thank you, Quentin. Um, next, we have Jay Swanger, followed by Brighton Sampson. Jay? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Amanda. I appreciate your work. Uh, my name is Jay. I'm currently using the pronouns he, him, and his. And I'm an employee of the University of Utah, speaking only for myself as a citizen. Um, I'd like to quickly but genuinely offer my support for the demands of most of the folks who have commented before me regarding the defunding of SLCPD and the redistribution of that budget to public education, affordable housing, uh, mental health uh, resources, and other social services. Um, I'd like to also thank the members of the Sully community who have the passion and commitment to justice that seem to be necessary in order to jump through the arbitrary hoops required to participate in what could have been one of the most successful city council meetings in our history, given its online format in the digital age. Um, like many of the elected officials uh, listening to our comments tonight, I hold a terrible privilege in my whiteness. Uh, and with that understanding, I'd like to proudly add my voice as a queer person in the Salt Lake City, um, who recognizes that my whiteness has exempted me from the greatest injustices and marginalization that queer and trans people of color experienced while they protested and rioted to work toward the type of systemic change that we have the opportunity to achieve now. I owe a great deal of my ongoing learning to people of color who offered me the patience and love necessary for me to realize what privileges I hold and how I can leverage them. And I would ask that the council members and Mayor Mendenhall recognize what an unearned gift you have, and what an obligation you hold as you listen to members of our black, indigenous, and POC communities, as well as the white folk who have long been involved in advocacy efforts in Salt Lake, while they share their experiences and frustrations with you and make recommendations and demands for how we can do and be and budget and legislate better. I hope you'll fulfill your responsibilities and leverage your privilege and power as an instrument and in the success of this centuries long movement and not as a barrier to its significant potential to affect change and manifest justice. Um, additionally, briefly and partially on behalf of my good friends, I'd like to decry the Utah National Guard soldiers taking a knee at the public safety building in what is clearly a false display of solidar solidarity with protesters for the Black Lives Matter movement just for the sake of social media on SLC PD platforms. Uh, lift this shameful two minutes. Just a quick general comment, lift this shameful and violent curfew, demilitarize and defund our law enforcement and stop rewarding SLC PD for the murder of Bernardo Palacios most recently and other people of color in our communities. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Thank you, Jay Swanger. Um, Brighton Sampson is here to listen. And so we'll move on to uh, Fota Mulitalo, followed by Alexandra Acuna. Fota. Fota, are you there? Yeah, can you hear me? Uh, yes, thank you. Okay, thanks. I have a general comment. I'm speaking on behalf of myself and my husband. My name's Fota Rasmussen, um, and my husband is Leland. Um, I just want to comment on the working session that I viewed earlier today. I've been here all day, and I think it's such an important message that we are sharing. In the working session, um, it felt just like it was fumbling around. It felt a little unprepared, and I felt a little discouraged, to be honest with you, while watching it. This is honestly the first time I've been involved. I'm new to the Salt Lake City area, and it was just a little disheartening. Um, we had... Um, Chief Tom Doubt there, and he mentioned that the way that they do intake meetings after protests is a hot wash. Um, it did not sound like that is involvement with anyone other than the local PD, um, and that is groupthink. We are allowing them to tell each other that they did a good job when perhaps they didn't, and clearly they aren't. Um, so we need to make sure it's accountable. If you go on the SLPD website, they have open data on assaults on officers, but not on officers that have assaulted citizens. 
Um, history is written by the winners and clearly the winners here are not the people of color or black individuals. It is so sad. Uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you for your comments. Thank you, Fota. Um, next, we have Alexandra Acuna, followed by Alex Bean. Alexandra? 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 Uh, Alexandra, are you there? Hello, can you hear me? <gasps> yes, thank you. Okay, great. Um, thank you all for extending me the privilege to talk before you today. Um, I am a minority student leader at the University of Utah. In regards to the proposed fiscal budget, I believe it's inappropriate to economically reinforce a police department and unjust so-called justice system that continues to criminalize melanin, mental health disparities, ability, and poverty. These funds would be more effectively allocated to housing, educational, transportation, and sustainability programs that actively work to make our community safer for marginalized citizens, not implement superficial trainings to a, mil to a militarized department that perpetuates the disparaging of our most vulnerable. Our houseless, impoverished, disabled, and communities of color deserve better from our representatives. Speaking as an 18-year Salt Lake resident and as a woman of color who has experienced poverty and homelessness in the city, it's time to empower these communities, not recklessly throw $84 million to the groups who keep them oppressed. Choose to divest from the SLCPD who refuses to stand in solidarity with minority communities beyond the empty words of superficial tweets. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alexandra. Um, next, we'll hear from Alex Bean, followed by Alec Girk. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Hi, my name is Alex Bean, and I too am here to advocate for a reduction in the Salt Lake City Police Department budget by at least $30 million. The reason for this reduction is thus. You cannot build a community through violence. You cannot build a community by arming police with military equipment. Popular measures used to quote unquote regulate the police, such as implicit bias training and body cameras are a band-aid. They do not address the root cause of the issue. To someone with a hammer, everything looks like a nail. If you continue to fund the police as if they are soldiers, they will continue to use that equipment to wage war against the citizens they supposedly protect. The only way to effectively de-escalate is to defund. I'd like to make a general comment. The past few days have shown us where Mayor Mendenhall stands. She stands against justice and she stands against the Black Lives Matter movement. She is a servant of capital, a leader for whom property takes precedent over people. Her history of Progressive ideals is utterly meaningless in the face of the violence she is ordered to be perpetrated against her own citizens. She can deny it on Twitter all she wants, but the correlation is clear. When Trump asked governors and mayors to stop the protests, she cracked down. This is your legacy, Mayor Mendenhall. This is how you will be remembered. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Um, next, we have Alec Gerk, followed by Alec Sherwood. Alec Gerk. Hi, yes. Um, my name is Alec Gerke. Um, I would like to speak on behalf of the budget. Um, I apologize. My voice is very raspy. I have lost it over the last few days being out on the streets, which is a small price to pay to echo the voices of the people of color that are speaking out on the streets right now. I would like to speak to the budget regarding uh, police funding. I am calling um, on all of you to use your power to defund the Salt Lake City Police Department and reallocate those funds to programs and professionals who are adequately educated and trained to protect and serve. The proposed $84 million budget for the Salt Lake City Police Department could be instead used to sponsor actual community act advocates and mental health professionals capable of serving their own communities. Based on the in-state tuition costs provided by the University of Utah, a uh, six-year degree is roughly 50,000 
dollars. The proposed $84 million budget could instead create over 1,500 qualified professionals with advanced degrees. Mental health professionals are required to complete six years of education because they can begin before they can even begin working on supervised hours to earn their license. The process takes this long because it is demanding to adequately learn how to not do harm to people they are serving. While mental health professionals are doing one of the most dangerous and deadly professions, they do not regularly murder people. Why are the police not held to the same standards in this city? If you find yourself scoffing at this idea, I simply ask you, what do the words serve and protect mean to you? I'd also like to make a general comment. I think that in this time, um, we don't have to face the hypothetical anymore of what we would do in the civil rights movement. We don't have to look at the hypothetical of what we would do during the pride movement when it first started with a riot. I think your actions right now are speaking as to what you would have done during those moments. And I am very disappointed in the leadership in this city. I'm very disappointed in the leadership in this city, which is instead of being out on the streets with the people to speak with the people and represent the people are instead putting in curfews and bringing in National Guard to squash this movement. And just mm -hmm. since we can all see you now, I am curious if by a raise of hand, if any of you would indicate over the last few days, have you been out on the street? And if it is our responsibility to get to know you, why don't you come out to get to know us on the streets and protest with us? Thank you. Thank you, Alec Gerke. Um, next, we have Alec Sherwood, followed by Ali Matia. Alec Sherwood. Alec Sherwood, are you there? I will, oh, Alec Sherwood, are you there? I'll go ahead and move to the next person. Um, Ali Mattia, followed by Heather Hickey. Ali? Oh, hello? Hello? Oh. Ali? Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Oh. oh, did I mess it up? Oh, uh, you're fine. Um, okay. And Allie, thank you. Uh, yeah, thanks. Um, my name's Allie, and I just want to, um, I'm going to be commenting on um, the proposed budget. Um, I want to ask you if you understand the consequences of what policing our neighborhoods mean. Our collective concern is not just about hiring 23 new cops, even if you say that wasn't a part of the proposition. There is a reason there have been protests against police brutality all across the nation. It goes so much deeper than that. Until we see direct action and a restructure of the budget and reform of our police department, we will demand change. We don't just need the police department to be in de-escalation training, we need their presence limited. In any way we can, we need to limit their power. This would help be accomplished by reallocating the funds. That's why this has come up in almost every response tonight. It's that important in protecting the people of color in our community. Ignoring it is being complicit in, a, in systemic racism. Cutting the budget and reallocating that amount to services that will actually help and heal people is a step in the right direction. And it's something that you have control over and that we're all asking you to do. I'm asking that the budget be cut by at least 30 million and be redirected to the community services such as housing, transportation, social work, and education. I also ask that the money that does go to, go to ELSA's SLCPD is invested in de-escalation training and not surveillance. That will conclude my comment. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Thank you, Ali. Um, next, we have Heather Hickey, followed by Lena Ryan. Heather? Hello. Hello, Heather. 
Hi. Um, so I would like to start by saying that I appreciate um, you being here tonight. And for those of you who have not been on your phones and have been paying attention, thank you for that. Um, I would also like to comment on the almost $85 million proposed budget for the fiscal year for the Salt Lake City Police Department. I, You mentioned earlier that um, a percentage of those were to uh, maintain previous contracts. Um, however, I would like to know what percentage of that is being allocated to maintain those previous contracts and what other percentage can be used instead to um, put money towards like social workers who uh, would respond to mental illness cases where people would be receiving the kind of treatment that they need. Um, trying to reform the police department has already been shown in the past not to work five years ago in Minnesota. Obviously, it's not working. Um, I think that instead we need to cut the funding. And I would also like to propose a $30 million um, cut for the funding in general. Um, I am also echoing what previous people have said as well, that um, a lot of that money can be put into a better situations such as providing quality housing for people who live at or below the poverty line. Um, yes, and um, yeah, I believe that focusing on procedural justice internally and externally has not worked. And I think that that has gotten us to where we are today. Um, I would also like to state uh, Mayor Mendenhall that this curfew has put a lot of black and brown communities in our area at a much higher risk of being targeted by the police. I do think that the use of violence on behalf of the police is unnecessary. Tear gas is a chemical weapon that is banned in warfare, and I would like to know why it's being used on your citizens. We preach two minutes. Thank you so much. That concludes what I wanted to say. Thank you, Heather. Um, again, just want to interject, um, not dissuaging or discouraging anybody, but um, our officers have not used any tear gas. Um, just want people to know that and for their purposes of making their comments. Go ahead. Thank you, Council Chair. Uh, next, we have Lena Ryan, followed by Ashley Engler. Lena? Oh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Um, this is Lena's husband. I'm so sorry she stepped away. Um, uh, I just agree with all these people. I have nothing to say. I was watching. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, next, we have Ashley Engler, followed by Angelica Bolanos. Ashley? Hi. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Hi, yes. Um, as no surprise, I would also like to um, echo um, as a statement to um, defund the Salt Lake City Police Department by at least $30 million. Um, I am a resident of Glendale um, in Salt Lake City, and um, I would also like to call for um, body cam footage of the atrocity that happened to Bernardo Palacios be released um, as soon as possible and anything that you can do for that. Um, I urge you to do almost immediately. Um, those gunshots woke us in the night and there was absolutely unnecessary force used um, in the case of Bernardo Palacios. I also would like to say um, that if you really do want to exercise your power as elected officials to make systemic change in Salt Lake City, please prove it by standing with your citizens that have spoken tonight. People came to this meeting prepared. People came to this meeting with stories. People came to this meeting with statistics. Um, I'd like to move to a general comment to Mayor Mendenhall. Um, I attended and spoke with a volunteer during your diversity and equity outreach um, at the Marmalade Library a few months ago. Um, as a resident of the West Side, one event that was poorly publicized at the library um, was ineffective at best and disingenuous at worst. Um, I would ask that you really prove to the Salt Lake City West Side community um, that you stand with the West Side and um, commit to the outreach that you say that you're going to commit to. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. 
Um, next, we have Angelica Bolaños, uh, followed by Brandon W. Angelica? Hi, yes. Um, I would like to discuss the budget, uh, the 2020 budget. Um, residents of Salt Lake City need youth programs and family programs that make a difference. They need fair housing. They don't need any more She Is Worth It buildings put in place of housing, affordable housing. I would like to see your forecasting models change. They're not working. They're not what we need. They need to be restructured and significant changes need to be made to the budget. Uh, youth need li more library programs. I'm talking about teenagers. Um, we need a shift in public land investment for them, trails and natural programs. We need them to, we need to encourage stewardship in the environment and awareness. We need better arts council programs as well. By this, you to, to achieve this, excuse me, you would need to reduce golf department funding. We are not golfing the way we used to in this city. A reduction in police department funding, even a shift in monies from youth city to teen programs that are more diverse than what they can provide. Families need fair housing. They need, people of color need more access to natural lands and trails. We need an increase in land trust funding to hand and affordable homes. Oh, geez, my list is so long. Um, I'd also like to see you guys join in the protest. Um, I did not feel safe this weekend when I attended the protest. I had to walk up to several police officers and ask them to let me leave. I did not want to be pushed south in front of the, the city building towards the people who had turned over a car. They refused. We've reached two minutes. I'm not sure why you're smiling. Um, my public comment is, I did not feel safe with the police officers pushing me south, Anna. I had to do, I had to reiterate my feelings to these police officers several times until they allowed us to leave. There were several people along with newscasters that were not part of that, the atrocities that were happening. And we were still being pushed south into what seemed unsafe. And if I did not mention it, I am district three. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Angelica. Um, next we have Brandon W followed by Colin user 64. Brandon? Yes, I'm calling to speak to the budget specifically regarding the funding allocated to policing in the city. Um, I'm a city, I'm a resident of Salt Lake City, but uh, first just a moment to put this into context. So we're in the middle of a pandemic right now. Uh, nationally, unemployment is at Great Depression levels. And in the city, we're dealing with an epidemic of homelessness. And now of all moments, you choose to let the police off the leash to beat the shit out of peaceful protesters. Have you all lost your goddamn minds? How exactly do you think riots happen? They're not weather events. They don't materialize out of thin air. They happen when people feel they have nothing left to lose. So yes, the police should be defunded. No, they should not be retrained. They need to be doing less. I have no interest in trying to program empathy into them any more than I have any interest in trying to tug on your heartstrings because you all clearly couldn't give less of a shit about this. But the idea of unrest does seem to make you unnervous. So go ahead, fund the police as much as you like and see what happens next. If you want riots, that's a great way to get them. Oh yeah, by the way, fuck your curfew. You don't have the jail space for all of us. Who's our next commenter?
Amanda, you're muted. Oh gosh, thank you. Uh, yes, thank you, Council Chair. Um, our next commenter is calling user 64, uh, last four digits, other number 3951, followed by Daniel Johnson, call in number 64. Hello? Hello. Um, could you say your name um, and then, oh, I apologize. Would you state your name and fine. give your comment? Hi, my name is Soledad. And I'm a Utah resident who is a person of color, Latina, and part of the LGBTQ plus community. And I would like to discuss on the public funding for Salt Lake City. And I understand that you're giving the Salt Lake City Police Department nearly $85 million. And I do not agree with this decision at all. I do not feel safe, protected, nor comfortable around the police officers here in Salt Lake City. I have faced discrimination from them. And it is clear with the recent incidents and the murder of Bernardo Palacios that the Salt Lake City Police Department will never change and has not changed. Instead, I would prefer to see a $30 million or even more decrease in the budget of Salt Lake City PD and a freeze on hiring new ones for next year. I would like to see an increase in the funding towards our community, such as food, housing authority, public transportation, public health, and towards Salt Lake City County Youth Services. We need to improve and help our communities. And clearly the police department here in Salt Lake City is not doing that. They're terrorizing black residents, residents of color, and residents of LGBTQ. We need to make these marginalized groups feel safer and more welcomed here in Utah. I personally want to feel more welcomed here and accepted, and so does my family and friends. So please reconsider the Salt Lake City budget and do what's right. Thank you. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Soledad. Yes, thank um, you. Next, uh, we have Daniel Johnson followed by Emily Williams. Daniel? Hey, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Great. First, I'd like to start off by saying I can see everybody on the stream is very tired at this moment, but just imagine that being constantly your life as it is mine as a Black man in this society. You do not get a break, and being up till 11.52 is not even the start of how I feel in this experience. Um, now to continue. I wish to comment on the budget proposed for the fiscal year. I'm disappointed and discouraged by the recent events in the world and the protests and the recent reactions by the SLPD in the reactions to the protests and the relationships with the African American community and communities of color. I recommend an extensive decrease in the police budget and a hiring freeze for those funds to be invested into other avenues such as education or other avenues that support the marginalized groups in the state. As an African American, the police have not shown um, any effort or very little effort in serving me or members of my community. Rather, they display violent authority and domination over those that they are supposed to protect. Now, considering the recent protests, it has only compounded my feeling of fear and anger that I will never have any sort of justice in this state. I am extremely frustrated and angry that community leaders and politicians, including the governor and mayor, will condemn protesters and praise police, but will not acknowledge and condemn a man who threatened and attempted to kill innocent people and failed to arrest that man immediately, allowing him to harass others. Malcolm X said, you cannot separate peace from freedom because no one can be at peace unless he has his freedom. As of right now, I feel that I cannot be at peace in a city that continues to infringe upon my life. Um, now, just as a general comment, I feel like you guys don't listen, and the one person that did say that he wants you to know you, why don't you get involved with community and actually offer accountability for the police force? It doesn't make sense that everyone wants to say that the police are great, but don't have accountability measures in place for communities of color. Also, Mayor Mendenhall, when have you come to rose park or glendale and actually offered up even just an open forum to hear community concerns and actually work with community members on praising in legislature or any other ideas that consider actually improving relations with marginalized groups or people of color because it doesn't make sense at this point in this community in this time that black people who are most affected by the coronavirus are out protesting to prove that their life matters while they are dying in greater numbers and i urge all the community members and the people that were on their phones during this meeting to actually reconsider and listen to the voices because we're not going to go away and i'm pretty sure in the next meetings and meetings following after that include issues such as this we'll be here and we'll be ready thank you thank you for your comments thank you daniel we appreciate it 
Um, next, we have Emily Williams, followed by Nick Hathaway. Emily? Hi there. Uh, my name is Emily Williams. I'm a resident of Salt Lake City. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you for providing this forum. Um, I want to reiter uh, reiterate what other people have come before me have said. Um, I disagree with the proposed budget of $84 million for the Salt Lake City Police Department. Um, I'm calling for this budget to be decreased by at least $30 million, and I would, I'm calling for these funds to be allocated to the universal needs of our marginalized communities and our communities of color. I'm calling for these funds to be reallocated to public education, housing equality, food access, climate justice and sustainability, and greater mental health support, um, and public transit as well. Um, I also have a general comment. Um, Mayor Mendenhall, I personally, I detest this curfew. I believe that it has been a move to undermine uh, First Amendment rights. I believe that it has caused to, I believe that it has caused um, just a decrease of overall safety for our marginalized communities, for our communities of color, for black communities. I believe that it has put homeless populations at risk. Uh, I believe it is unconstitutional. Um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Council Chair, we just have a technical difficulty. Thank you, Emily. Next, Thank we you. have Nick Hathaway, followed by Ariel Geno Genovese. And Nick has left the meeting, it looks like. So, Ariel, we'll go ahead and unmute your microphone now. hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, first, I would like to address the budget, uh, the proposed budget for $84 million to the police. I object to and would like to see them defunded by at least $30 million and see that money used towards public education, housing, and greater mental health support as echoed by the others in this call. Um, my general comment is to Mayor Mendenhall, who has spoken greatly about the damage to our beautiful city. And I'd like to say that our city is not beautiful so long as injustice stands. When people, when brown and black people are executed by the police at a higher rate, or executed by the police at all, that is not a beautiful city. Calling for a curfew, which increases the policing of black and brown bodies and of protesters is an infringement on First Amendment rights and is absolutely unconstitutional and does not make our city beautiful. In addition, I would like to say that I have a friend who was arrested at the protest she actually tried to stay peaceful and not join the group and was arrested anyway. The police, when they took her in, forced her to put her hands in her mouth without offering sanitation. They took her face covering from her and provided no security against the increasing pandemic. The protesters have been mostly wearing masks and following social distancing as best we can. None of us want to be out here, but we have to be because injustices keep happening. So I'm calling for defunding of the police and I'm saying that our city is not beautiful when it is unjust and that the police are not only, they are also increasing risks for this pandemic right now. Please do better. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Council Chair, that was the last commenter. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, we appreciate all the public comments. Those, of course, will all be um, part of the public record. Um, we will go ahead and move on to our next agenda item. Um, I will now look for a motion for item G2 regarding the budget amendment uh, number six for fiscal year 2019-20. Mr. Chair? Yes. Oh, wait, I wasn't ready for this one. <laughs> Mr. Want me to do it, Amy? <laughs> if we wouldn't mind, uh, Council Member Fowler, I, I can take this one. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, I uh, move the Council adopt an ordinance approving uh, 
Item D7 in the proposed budget amendment with changes to the funding source shown on the motion sheet. Uh, further move the council makes a finding that appropriating these funds are necessary to address residents' unforeseen costs during the pandemic emergency. 1.1 million from the general funds fund balance for item B7 appropriated into non-departmental. The council intends to fully replenish the 1.1 million to fund balance using a funding source selected at a future date, potentially including care to act Thank you. Um, I have a motion from Council Member Johnston. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Chair, sorry, this is this is Katie. Oh, I forgot one A, didn't I? Yes, please. Could you also include that a motion to close the public hearing? Thank I, you. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. We should do that first. I uh, I okay. move the council, Mr. Chair. I move the council to close the public hearing. Thank so, you. To do that first. Well, d Katie, can we do that as one motion? Yes, I think that you can add it all into one. Okay. Thank you. So, Chair, I move the count to close the public hearing uh, and subsequent to that, everything I just said. Thank you. Okay. Second. Um, I have a motion from. Oh, yes, Amanda. I apologize, Council Chair. We do have one more comment if that's a, if it's not too late. Um, sh sure, that's fine. Um, Okay, we have Ash we have Ashley Finley here um, okay. to give her comment. Thank you. Sorry, go ahead, Ashley. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you so much. I'm not sure. I, I guess I was having technical difficulties, but my name is Ashley Finley. I've been a resident of Salt Lake City, Utah for seven years now. I am a black um resident of Salt Lake City, Utah, and I just have a few questions for my comment. Um, why has the mayor enacted a curfew to suppress the justifiable and valid anger of oppressed and brutalized citizens? Why has the mayor chosen to remain silent about the continuous violence and harm enacted against Black, Indigenous people of color? Why has the mayor chosen to remain silent about the murder of Salt Lake City's own Bernardo Palacios, but chose to make a statement about George Floyd's tragic murder? Why has the mayor chosen to support a murderous and racist police force instead of choosing to stand with the people of color in our community, especially when she took this position away from a woman of color and pandered to Salt Lake City citizens of color? Why is the mayor chosen to support the threatening National Guard presence in Salt Lake City when residents rise up and voice their very valid and justifiable anger? Why has the mayor chosen to ignore the violence in her own backyard? Does the mayor's silence indicate that we, the marginalized and brutalized people of color, are of no importance beyond a vote to get you into the white supremacist system and structure that affords you political privilege and power? I demand that the mayor work on and release a detailed and exhaustive action plan for protecting black and brown citizens from racist policies and a racist police force. I demand that the mayor take a firm and clear stance against the murder and violence against black and brown bodies. Additionally, it is absolutely absurd that even with all of the evidence there at your hands, that this police force is incompetent, well, we've two racist. Minutes. Okay, uh, general comment, please. Yes, I'm almost done. Racist and violent that you would have the audacity to propose $84 million of funding for them while black, brown, indigenous, unsheltered populations are dying because of lack of access to medical treatment food insecurity, gentrification, and sexual violence. Shame on you. Thank you. All right. Uh, sorry, was that Amanda? Oh, yes. Uh, sorry, Council Chair. Just saying thank you, Ashley. Oh, yes. Thank you. Um, that concludes our the public comment portion of our meeting. We will go ahead and move to item um, G2. I'm sorry, Andrew, can you restate it? Sure. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move the council to close the public hearing. And I also move the council adopt an ordinance approving item D7 in the proposed budget amendment with changes to the funding source shown on the motion sheet. 
I further move the council makes a finding that appropriating these funds are necessary to address residents' unforeseen costs during the pandemic emergency. 1.1 million from the general funds fund balance for item D7 appropriated into non-departmental. The council intends to fully replenish the 1.1 million fund balance using a funding source selected at a future date, potentially including CARES Act dollars. Second. And close the public hearing. Yes. That was it. He already said that. Oh, already said I'm that. sorry. I missed it. Sorry. So we have a second from Council Member Johnston and, or, I'm sorry, a motion from Council Member Johnston, a second from Council Member Dugan. Um, is there any discussion to this motion? Uh, just clarification, this 1.1 million, Mr. Chair, for the public is the, the emergency housing assistance that the mayor has put forward. Thank you for that clarification. Um, so again, motion from Council Member Johnston, a second from Council Member Dugan. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, the will proceed. Mr. Over. Chair, sorry. Yes. One question. You, we, I'm not sure earlier if you said you are intending to uh, continue a bit of a discussion with the administration on the criteria. They made that offer, so you probably don't have to make it a condition, but just in the public record, let us know if you do intend to have that discussion or if you're okay without that uh, criteria discussion. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Cindy Guest Jensen. Um, I assumed that we, I assume we do want to still have that criteria discussion. Um, yes, all right, thank you. Ms. Um, Council Member Dugan, do you still second that? Yes. Okay. Um, um, the motion's been made and seconded. I don't see any one uh, wishing to speak on this item, so we'll proceed to a vote. Councilmember Rogers? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Aldemoros? Yes. Mono? Yes. Dugan? Yes. Fowler? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Um, that passes unanimously. Um, let's see. I am now looking for. Um, a motion G3. Yes, on G3. Mr. Chair, I move the council close the public hearing and refer the item to a future date for action. Second. Thank you. I have a motion from Council Member Rogers, second from Council Member Johnston. Um, is there any discussion to this item? Seeing none, we'll proceed to a vote. Council Member Rogers? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Uh, Valdemoros? Yes. Mono? Yes. Dugan? Yes. Fowler? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Okay, proceeding now to uh, G4. No. Um, no, we wanted to do an item. Was that G3 through 13? Yeah, we wanted we we did we did G3, but let's um, I'm now looking for a motion that combines um, G4 through G13 uh, that are all associated with the mayor's budget budget implementation for Salt Lake City um, fiscal year 2021, including the library fund. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion, Mr. Chair. Close the public hearing and refer that those items to a future date for action. And also to combine those items? Yes. Okay, thank you. Second. I have a motion from Councilmember Rogers and a second from Councilmember Fowler. Um, any discussion to this item? Seeing none, then we'll proceed to a vote. Councilmember Rogers? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Uh, Valdemoros? Yes. Uh, Mono? Yes. Dugan? Yes. Fowler? Yes. And I'm yes as well. Um, council members will now proceed to um, items G14 and G15, the grant applications. I'm looking for a motion to combine these and uh, to either close the public hearing and move them to uh, defer action or to keep the public hearing open. Mr. Chair. 
Yes. Uh, I move the council close the public hearing for items G14 and G15 to the future consent agenda for action. Second. Yeah. I have a motion from Council Member Johnson, a second from Council Member Fowler. Is there any discussion to this? Seeing none, um, I'll go ahead and proceed it for a roll call vote. Council Member Rogers. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Aldemoros. Yes. Mono. Yes. Hugan. Yes. Fowler. Yes. And I'm yes as well. That passes unanimously. Um, we'll go ahead and scroll down to, I'm sorry, hold on. Um, section H, the, uh, oh, sorry, we already did section H. That was the comment portion. We've already addressed all of those items. That brings us to item H2, which is questions from the city council to the mayor. Does anyone have any questions for the mayor tonight? Seeing none, we'll move to That's the tonight. Thank you. We'll move to the next item on our agenda. Thank you, Mayor, for being here, uh, which is potential action items. We don't have any potential action items. That brings us to item J1 regarding new business. Uh, a new business item that we have is approving the appointment of Cindy Lou Trishman as the Salt Lake City Recorder. I'll look for a motion. Oh, wait, um, sorry. Mr. Chair? Yeah, oh, sorry, just one second. Before we make this item, I just wanted to say a couple things that as it's been said many times, the change here is bittersweet. Cindy Lou has been an ongoing stronghold for the council's office and we hate to lose her experience and talent. However, we are losing, even though we're losing a valid member of the staff, it's absolutely a gain for the city as a whole. Cindy Lou, I'm sure you and your family understand what this commitment means during your time in office. You, uh, in our office, you have always been dedicated and have thrown yourself entirely into your projects. And this new position is more than a typical nine to five job. On behalf of the council and your city residents, we extend our gratitude to you and your family for their patience and support. Your appointment as the city recorder is a great gift to our city. Congratulations, this is a well-deserved appointment. I look forward to confirming you to this position. Is there a motion? Mr. Chair, ladies first. <laughs> Go ahead, James. You you started first. <laughs> I was just going to say let's. I I make a motion that we suspend the rules and we um, we accept the advice and consent of Cindy Lou Trishman for the Salt Lake City Recorder. Second. I have a motion from Council Member Rogers and a second from Council Member Fowler. Is there any discussion to this item? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and proceed to a roll call vote. Council Member Rogers. Yes. Johnston. Yes. Valdemoros. Yes. Mono. Yes. Dugan. Yes. Fowler. Yes. And I am an enthusiastic, even though it may, may not seem like it, I am an enthusiastic yes. Um, that is unanimous. Um, that brings us to uh, unfinished business item K1. That is resulting uh, or is regarding a resolution to amend the central law session. Wasatch interlocal agreement, including the admission of the town of Brighton. I'll look for a motion. Mr. Chair, I move the council adopt a resolution amending the Central Wasatch Commission interlocal agreement, including the addition of the town of Brighton to the Central Wasatch Commission. Thank you, Councilman Rogers, and thank you, Councilmember Fowler, for your second. Um, we have a motion and a second. Um, is there any discussion to this item? Seeing none, then let's proceed to a roll call vote. Councilmember Rogers? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Aldemoros? Yes. Fowler, or I mean, Mono? Yes. Hugan? Yes. Fowler? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. That passes unanimously. Um, we have no scheduled items under the consent portion of our agenda. This concludes our formal city council Wait, meeting. Mr. Chair. I know it's really late, but just can I say one quick thing? It'll take 22 seconds or less. It is literally a different day, so keep it quick. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I just want to say thank you to everybody that called in, and thank you to Amanda and Cindy Lou and Bobby for making this an absolutely epic council meeting and working their butts off to make sure that everybody was heard as much as we could possibly make it happen. So thank you, Amanda, you did a great job. And that's it. Like that. I just really, Amanda, we couldn't have done it without you. Thank you. That's true for our staff. Uh, this has been at this point, uh, um, let's see, hold on. This has been a 14 hour 
a work day with um, no break. So um, thank you for everybody for your very hard work. It's very much appreciated. Um, Councilmember Valdemoros. I was just. You're just waiting. Okay, yeah, thank you. Sorry. All right, thank you everyone. This concludes our meeting for the night. Um, we'll, we'll be in touch about, um, I, I've been trying to talk with you about whether or not we're meeting Thursday. I'll have an answer for you tonight. Thank you.